conditions therein. The U.S. has long done whatever seems expedient at any given time in the Middle East, which somehow always seems to be war. But as their interventions grow, the lack of justification for them is becoming more and more obvious. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports low-wage earners in multiple industries on Wednesday gathered to demonstrate from coast to coast against present minimum wage levels as part of a two-year-old campaign known as the Fight for $15 per Hour. Workers in the fast food, healthcare, retail, and other industries organized the rallies in about 200 U.S. cities such as New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, and Los Angeles. The tax day rallies advocated by labor unions varied in participation from a couple dozen to thousands of marchers. Wednesday's rallies were notable particularly for employees in the fast food industry who have long been spearheading efforts to bump the minimum wage, which is set by each state's government as long as it conforms to the federal minimum. Elizabeth Owens, a 56-year-old former industry worker and New York resident, said, I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at McDonald's, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Burger King. And I was making $423 a week after taxes. It's just not enough. In New York State, the minimum wage is $8.75 per hour. Recently, several employers like Walmart and McDonald's have taken steps to boost their minimum wages. McDonald's said its wage increase will take effect in July and ensure that every employee will earn at least $1 more than the minimum hourly wage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. The Houston Chronicle reports police officers fatally shot a man who led them on a car chase Wednesday morning in northeast Harris County, Texas. According to a Harris County Sheriff's Office spokesman, the chase began about 10.40 a.m. Houston police tried to pull over the driver of a blue Chrysler 300 due to suspicious activity, including two unsafe lane changes. As they approached the car, the driver fled. A chase ensued through northeast Houston, and the driver eventually struck two vehicles. Officials said the driver got out of the the car and officers told him to raise his hands. He then appeared to reach back inside the vehicle. That's when officers opened fire on him, firing 10 to 12 rounds. The man died at the scene. No weapon was found in the car. The slain man was identified as Frank Shepard, a 41-year-old barber and father of three. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. J.C. Penney abandons its 45-second sale. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Word came today from J.C. Penney headquarters in Plano, Texas, that the retail giant will discontinue its 45-second sale. The bargain bonanza, in which all J.C. Penney merchandise is discounted by 60% for 45 seconds starting at 1 p.m. daily, simply wasn't pulling in enough revenue. CEO Alan Questrom. The uh, 45-second sale drew very strong customer response, but regrettably, only a handful of shoppers actually got to capitalize on our fantastic prices due to the horrific injuries they sustained during their stampede to the cashier. Questrom added that plans are in the works to create a longer two-minute sale intended to give frantic shoppers at least a fighting chance to enjoy incredible store-wide savings. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. We'll, of course, take your calls about anything you want to discuss, although things are going to be a little different 
uh, tonight than they normally are. Normally on Thursday nights, we've got Johnson in here as our uh, guest co-host. But tonight, a very special guest co-host is with us this evening for at least... Uh, an indeterminate portion of the show, as long as uh, as long as we can keep him here, because he's got a a wife and some kids to run off to at uh-huh. some point. Uh, John Bush, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Ian, thank you so much for having me. It's always good to be in the Shire, the freest state in the union, with a lot of wonderful arguably, people, and beautiful arguably. geography. Feels good to be here. You're up here for a very special reason, John, because uh, you will sadly not be making it to the Porcupine Freedom Festival this year. You've got some exciting. Is it? Can we talk about what's happening in Austin with you and Cat in the store? Is yes. That, is that official? It was supposed to be kept under wraps, but I think Harlan ended up telling uh, more people than Kat and I, and people started talking to us about it before we even knew people were supposed <laughs> to know. So, so uh, well, I think this is a pretty exciting thing for you guys. Um, Mark and I had the opportunity when we were down in Austin at the uh, the Texas Bitcoin conference mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. We had the opportunity to finally go and visit uh, the Brave New Books store, mm-hmm. which is uh, this sort of classic activist location. It's uh, it's kind of like it, it reminded me a lot of like the Keen Activist Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a place where people can come to. There's a like, presentation room. There's a radio studio in the back. Uh, there's some room that you know you guys are you've got some neat plans for. I think in the future. Yeah. But it's a bookstore first and foremost. And it was it was a cool place. It's like right underneath the uh, the Chase Bank building. Right. So you guys are undermining undermining. The banks. Uh, Underground, literally and figuratively, (laughs) which is cool. And you know, I'd heard so much about it, and it was really cool to finally be there. And and uh, you guys threw a Bitcoin party there right after the. It was kind of like the unofficial after after party, party. uh, which was attended by it looked like at least a solid fifty people, if not more than that. It was hard to Mm -hmm. hard to really count. So you guys are taking that that store over. You're you're buying the operation. That's right. We are going to be buying it from Harlan Dietrich. He's the original owner. He started in 2006 with the goal of educating students on UT campus. He went to UT and wasn't very happy with his education. They left a lot out about real world history. So started off in 2006 and uh, started off with a big bent on conspiracy theories, uh, 9-11 truth, for example, and then uh, kind of evolved with the evolution of uh, the movement for more freedom and, and truth in this world. And Ron Paul came around, and the bookstore hopped on that and held uh, Ron Paul debate watch parties with like 100 people, and then mm. libertarianism, anarcho-capitalism, a lot of survival stuff. And now one of the biggest products uh, are the natural health products. So there's a lot that the store has to offer, and more than anything, it's been a hub to uh, help facilitate the development of the local Central Texas Liberty Movement. Yeah, I can definitely, I could definitely see that being the case uh, when I was there. And it's exciting that you guys are taking it over because you and Kat are some of the most, I would say, active, uh, noteworthy activists in in the movement. And it's a new chapter in your life, uh, yes. so to speak. And uh, you guys are about to roll into that in the beginning of May. So prior to the takeover, there you're going on a tour. Tell us, uh, tell our listeners about that because that's ultimately what brought you to New Hampshire. That's right. We're currently on our third unconventional Bitcoin-only tour across the country using Bitcoin only. Uh, the first one was coming up to Porkfest uh, last year in June. Then we went out to San Diego, California and back using Bitcoin only. And we had the wonderful opportunity. We were offered, uh, gifted, the Unschool Bus, which the Holderson family traveled around the country in for three and a half years. Uh, Jeff built it from scratch, and it really uh, benefited their family greatly. They wanted to pass it on to a family that would use it and, and keep the uh, the essence of it, the mission alive. Mm-hmm. So they, they chose us, and we came up to pick it up, and we thought, what better opportunity than to do another uh, Bitcoin-only tour? And basically what we're trying to do is encourage not only people that have already adopted, adopted Bitcoin to use Bitcoin, but we're talking with a lot of local merchants and vendors at conferences and stuff and encouraging them uh, to accept and use Bitcoin. So we want to demonstrate that it has real-world practical applications, and we want to encourage people to spend their Bitcoin and support those merchants who take that uh, revolutionary, evolutionary leap to start accepting this cryptocurrency. Yeah, and I have to say I'm pretty excited about one of the sponsors on the tour. I saw you post on your Facebook page, I think it was last night, that you were in a portion of New Hampshire going out to some kind of a restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, and that you had paid for the bill with a Bitcoin-based credit card, or what looked like that. Apparently, it's a debit card. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so the first couple times that we traveled the country, uh, it was very difficult to figure out how to pay for gasoline, and there were certain needs that we had. For example, we had to pay— Because your goal was to pay for everything you needed with Bitcoin on the previous tour. Our goal is to only export, only output Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you got to get a little crafty. We use Gift, gyft.com mm-hmm. quite often. You buy uh, gift cards with Bitcoin. 
Uh, but we had problems with gas, and you know, really we were looking for a tool that could help bridge that gap in those difficult positions, like buying temporary transit plates from the de- uh, new uh, Department of Motor Vehicles in New Hampshire, for example. They don't take Bitcoin. There's no gift right. cards for the DMV. So uh, we discovered WageCan, actually, at the Texas Bitcoin Conference, and we ah. reached out to them and said, hey, we'd love to partner with you and get the word out. And I think they have this awesome tool that's really going to help Bitcoin adoption. It basically allows you to charge a debit card, to load a debit card with Bitcoin and use it anywhere that accepts MasterCard. And that is something that there is an extreme need for in the Bitcoin movement. So we're excited to have them on board, and we're excited to share uh the Bitcoin share that message with the Bitcoin people. Yeah, I'm excited too because I hadn't, I didn't see them at uh, you know the Bitcoin conference. I'm just so busy doing my own thing there. It's easy to kind of get tunnel vision and not really know who all the other vendors are uh, at the event. So I wasn't able to uh, to meet any of these wonderful folks, but they're actually here uh, in the studio with us because they came out to meet you. So you came all the way up here from Texas, and then uh, Frankie and Leon came all the way out here from ca- uh, California. Yeah. And, and a Fiat. Right. <laughs> uh, Frankie, welcome to uh, Free Talk Live. Uh, thanks, Ian. Well, it's great to to have you on. And uh, originally, you're from, is it Taiwan? Yeah, yeah. And so now living in uh, San Francisco? Oh, uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. And you came all the way out here. You've met up with John. You're put, putting this uh, wage can debit card, Bitcoin debit card out. Yeah. This is new. This is like fresh. This just hit within the last two weeks, right? Yeah, we, we, we just uh, introduced our Bitcoin debit card for about a, a month. Uh-huh. Yeah. And and uh, uh, we attend a Bitcoin conference in Austin, and uh, uh, we uh, meet John uh, at a uh, bookstore. Uh, and then uh, uh, John sent me an email that uh, say that uh, they have a, a ongoing mention Bitcoin bus uh, journey. So uh, I uh, we we decided to uh, be uh, one of the sponsor, and and we are very very thrilled to p- provide the Bitcoin debit card. So, yeah. how, I mean, how does it work? This, there have been a lot of people. John's actually holding it up here in front of the camera, uh, and it looks like a real, you know, debit card. It's got the MasterCard logo on it. So I presume, you know, that means this is accepted anywhere MasterCard is accepted, which is almost everywhere that takes credit cards, right? Yep. Yeah, it's almost everywhere to uh, accept it uh, if uh, the merchant accepts the foreign debit card. Yeah. If they accept foreign ones, yeah, foreign ones. Okay, yeah. and and yeah, it's, because, because this car is uh came from Hong Kong, mm-hmm. yeah. And and what percentage of merchants uh, accept the the foreign cards? Uh, it's o- almost um maybe ninety nine per- percent. Yeah, I would expect so. four for four. Yeah. The four times I've tried to use it, it worked every time. One hundred percent, so without far. a hitch. That's incredible. So yeah. I mean, take me through the process here. I want to get one of these. Uh, what what is required? What 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 hoops do I have to jump through to uh, to get one? Oh, you just need to uh, re- register a uh, WageCan account uh, by visiting uh, WageCan.com. WageCan W A G E C A N WageCan.com. Yeah, and and then uh, you you uh, make the Bitcoin deposit and uh, you uh, go go through the uh, Bitcoin debit card application process, uh, which uh, we need uh, to provide. Uh, uh, the photo ID and mm-hmm. the utility bill, and and that that's uh that case is for the uh, uh anti money laundry purpose. So so uh we we uh keep the uh personal da- da- data mm-hmm. uh uh in, into a uh, our Hong Kong bank, and then we we delete our d- data. Yeah. So yeah. the bank itself, they're not holding the Bitcoin, right? Is it WageCan that holds on to the Bitcoin? Yeah, we, we then- hold the Bitcoin, and and we do the uh, Bitcoin to U.S. dollar exchange. And and we we just uh load the uh, U.S. dollar into the de- debit card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I want I've got a few more questions. Mm-hmm. If you can you can stick with us for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. More with uh, Frankie from WageCan here in a moment. Also John Bush, you're sticking with us here uh, till further notice. So if you've got questions for John Bush about the unconventional Bitcoin tour, the Bitcoin bus is going to be hitting the road soon. They got to take it into the shop. Make sure it's all tuned up. That's you know got to get taken care of because it actually broke down yesterday. We'll talk about that coming up here <laughs> uh, in a moment. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven. We'll come back with more Free Talk Live here in moments. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. 
Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. Don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. The unconventional Bitcoin bus tour is well, sort of kicked off at this point. I don't know if it officially kicks off until it actually leaves New Hampshire at this point, because right now uh, the bus is having a little bit of difficulty. It hasn't run in about a year. So it's been sitting for about a year. and then, been sitting. Uh, sitting in the cold. And then, John, you and Kat uh, from Austin were gifted the what was the unschool bus. Mm-hmm. It is now going to be the Bitcoin bus, and it is beginning in its transformation of uh, graphics and things like that. That's what, what we were running around yes, trying to do another today. another issue. Um, but uh, it's it's exciting. I'm glad you guys are doing these tours because you know it, it brings attention to to Bitcoin. You guys are the goal is to only spend Bitcoin as you are traveling from point A to B, C, D. You're going to Asheville, North Carolina. Or how far south are you going before Texas? 
We're going to stop by Bruce Fenton's place, actually, for lunch. He's so, a, doesn't he live in Massachusetts? I'm going to stop by through Massachusetts. Then we're going to... They've convinced me to take the bus into Staten Island, which uh, I'm not looking forward to. And then after that, we're going to go through the mountains on the bus, which I'm not looking forward to. And that through Asheville, North Carolina, which has a bunch of great Liberty people, a lot of good uh, Bitcoin fans. Then we're going to Kansas City to visit Cat's parents. And then Houston, Texas, which also has a great Liberty movement and Bitcoin movement. And then on home to San Marcos, Texas, all the way using Bitcoin only. So very exciting. People can follow you over at uncoinventional.com. Will there be updates posted there? Yes, you can check out the Sovereign BTC podcast. We're doing updates uh, every other day. Okay, and, great. Uh, that's intimate details. Kat and I like to have a good time on that too. So you'll probably entertain, get a nice little intimate look at Kat and I's cool. relationship. Yeah. And your kids are with you too, right? You got the whole family? Uh huh. We have a three year old and a two and a half year old. Three and a half year old and a two year old, and they're enjoying it. They like to be out on the road, and they're having a good time. You going back down to Austin eventually, which is the home of Liberty Stickers. Uh, dot com. And if you want to reach people with the ideas of liberty, you can do it right from the back of your car or your bus or whatever <laughs> it is that you drive. And you can reach thousands of people with just one bumper sticker. And of course, you know people love to read them. So check out the vast selection of witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic liberty-oriented messages over at libertystickers.com. That's uh, libertystickers.com. And Rick and the crew over there, they've been a longtime supporters of uh, Free Talk Live and LRN.FM. And that reminds me, John, don't leave here tonight without me sending you with a bunch of LRN.FM bumper stickers, because I know you wanted some stuff to hand out, I think, uh, when you're on the road at we'll take you know, different meetups and stuff like that. Because uh, LRN.FM is going to be one of the sponsors of the Unconventional That's Tour, right. which I'm very excited about, which is cool because it sort of continues in the tradition of LRN and Free Talk Live sponsoring these tours. It mm-hmm. was uh, Pete Nadamo, of yeah. course, you, you know well from copblock.org, that went on the Motorhome Diaries tours years ago, and we had the LRN logo up there. And so it'll be just like that all over again. Yeah. Yeah, we appreciate your support. So we were talking with uh, Frankie, who is with us here tonight, uh, and uh, you are. What's your role with uh, with WageCan? I didn't even ask you that. What What do you do for the company? Oh, um, uh, I'm a CEO of uh, WageCan, and and uh, um, I'm mainly do the uh, sales and uh, marketing and and the whole uh, project management. So you get your hands yeah. full then. Yeah. yeah. You get a lot the head honcho. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for taking time out of yeah. your, I'm sure, very busy schedule to yeah. be with us here tonight. So for listeners just tuning in, when I saw John Bush post this yesterday on his Facebook profile that he had just bought something with Bitcoin via this uh, Bitcoin-based debit card, I was blown away because we've been covering Free Talk, or Free Talk Live has been covering Bitcoin for three years now, four years uh, on on the radio, and every six months we'll hear some other company saying mm-hmm. we've got a Bitcoin credit card coming out, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. then it never happens. It just just vaporizes. It never becomes a reality. And then to see John with this thing in his hand, having already used it successfully, it was just a. It blew me away. I was really shocked that this was this technology is actually here now. Uh, so. So we, I was asking you before to take me a little bit through the steps here. So you sign up for an account at wagecan.com. Yep. You apply with uh, a photo ID and a utility bill. Presumably you get approved. Mm-hmm. You get sent this debit card. How does one uh, get Bitcoin turned into cash on the debit card? What's that process like? Oh, uh, After you activate your debit card and, and you, you can go to the uh, lo- loading page to, to load the Bitcoin in, into the debit card and and you, you will see the exchange rate and you, if you uh if you feel good at the, the rate we, we will exchange uh right right away and and make the US dollar uh available on your debit card in one business day mm. yeah. so you load Bitcoin into your account first at wagecan.com right yeah, so i would yeah. send my bitcoin to wagecan yeah. once it's with wagecan at any point then i can then authorize the bitcoin to or a portion of the bitcoin yeah, or all, a, a, a however portion, much i want yeah, yeah, of the yeah. bitcoin in my wagecan yeah. account authorize yeah. that over onto the debit card which it then is it at that point is us dollar yeah when it's, on it's the debit us card. dollar yeah so yeah. there's that's that, that's when the conversion happens yeah. over there and yeah. did you also mention something about an interest bearing bitcoin account did yeah, i hear that uh, right? uh, we, we we encourage user to park their bitcoin into our account because uh we we can provide a daily interest but uh the de- daily I- interest is very uh day, day, day by day and our sure. interest is generated by the arbitrage between the uh bitcoin exchange 
uh, I mean, uh, uh, why if uh, two ex exchange, uh, one is high and one is low, we, we uh, sell high and we buy buy low. And that's what arbitrage is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and uh, we we have uh, uh, run run a script on it, so so it's uh, essentially is automatically wow. trading. Yeah. Quite the business model you got there. Yeah, Frank. it's really. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you're doing very well with it, and that's pretty awesome because yeah. I first of all. Um, I've never heard of anybody paying interest on you know a Bitcoin account anywhere, and so that's cool. I think there's maybe one or two exchanges that claimed mm -hmm. it. I don't know how legit that was. Yeah. Um, how many? Uh, I mean, this is brand new. So how's it been going so far? Uh, we 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 just uh are online for about what, one month, and mm -hmm. and uh currently it's about uh over a hundred of users right right now. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is it only U.S. or somebody in Canada can uh, can this be used for Canadian dollars? Yeah, as well? uh, it's uh, around the world. We, we ship mm -hmm. the uh, debit card around the world, uh, but but the debit card is only uh, available in U U.S. dollar. Only right, in right U.S. Now. for the card. Okay. Yeah, and we're planning to uh to uh introduce the U Euro debit card mm. in, in maybe cool. in um, half a year. Yeah, that's nice. exciting. Yeah. There's also a address that people can send Bitcoin directly to and it goes straight to the card, right? It doesn't have yeah. to come from your account. Oh, wow. So yeah. Kat and I were to throw out our address and say, hey, help us power the gas on the bus on the way back home, put the address, it immediately deposits. I actually did that today. Immediate the first, or within 24 sorry, hours? Sorry, within 24 hours. Right. It right. hits the account and it shows up. I guess probably after a transaction confirmation or two, mm -hmm. you can see it show up as pending to be deposited in your debit card. Yeah, I did I that today. Need, uh, or six co confirmations. Six yeah. confirmations, okay. Yeah. Now, this is a killer app. I mean, this, yeah. to me, is one of the most awesome things I've heard about with Bitcoin. So thank you, Frankie. Well, for quite the endorsement. Uh, thank you for yeah. your team thank you, for, yeah. Yeah. for making this yeah. real for people. But John, are you worried this is going to get you uh, turn you into a lazy Bitcoin activist? Because, <laughs> I mean, the you know the the downside of this is that now you can just swipe the card and the other person doesn't really even have to know or understand uh, what Bitcoin is. I mean, what's your plan for the tour? Are you going to try to pitch Bitcoin to them first, and then if they won't take <laughs> the Bitcoin, then you'll pull out this card and be like, oh yeah, well sure. you're going to get it anyway. Kind of. Yeah, Cat uh, and I pride ourselves in being as consistent as humanly possible. So from the get-go, uh, when we had trouble with the gasoline, we had people buy us the debit card. And it's a little bit of a workaround, but we're sure to tell them that it's a Bitcoin-only debit card. And mm. we talk about how using Bitcoin can still avoid the transaction fees. Yeah, and I also noticed that there are, are barely any fees with this wage can card, which was I, I was also impressed with as well. Uh, Frankie, thanks for coming on Free Talk Live yeah, tonight. Thanks, Ian. Really appreciate it. Wagecan.com. We'll, I'm sure, be talking more about that in the future. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. Join us here on Free Talk Live. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last. This offer isn't available online, so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today. 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only $99, and it'll be shipped to you completely free. Call 800-274-3070 right now. That's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last. Don't wait. Call today. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24 7 to help you we also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder ankle or back you may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you so please call now 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 
New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.fm. Free Talk Live. You may join us here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. You've been hearing all this talk about Bitcoin on Free Talk Live. And of course, you might be wondering where and how you can get them. Well, ExpressCoin.com can help you with that. In fact, they can get you Bitcoin, Litecoin, as well as Dogecoin. Uh, It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business, and you can get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer. It is very easy. ExpressCoin.com, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, that is ExpressCoin.com. Plus, you can grab their smartphone app, and if you use coupon code FTL, you'll get up to $40 worth of your the cryptocurrency of your choice, with no fee at all. So a great way to get in for the first time and absolutely spend no fee on top of the amount that you're actually purchasing there over at ExpressCoin.com. Again, don't forget coupon code FTL. Mark Edge joining us here in the studio tonight. Hey, Mark. Hey, how's it going? I was uh, just tweeting and and doing the production stuff here while uh, Frankie was on. Yeah, thanks for that. uh, I'm pretty excited about the wage can thing. I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, putting in my application for one of these cards. Oh, you haven't done it yet? (laughs) I've been running around today trying to, you know, get John Bush. uh, And hauling me around, driving Miss Daisy style. I can see your priorities. It's fine. (laughs) Yeah. Um, well, so John's kicking off this uh, tour, the Bitcoin bus, Uncoinventional Tour, on the website, uncoinventional.com. Third tour, actually. Apparently. Third. So you're pretty experienced Third at this. in one calendar year. Not 2014, but a full calendar year. About after this one's done, two out of 12 months will have been using Bitcoin only. But Once the, you take over Brave New Books, you'll be uh, stuck in one place. Yeah. That's uh, that's how it is. The life of a retailer. Yes. We need uh, some stability. It'll be it'll be good for the kiddos. Uh, life's been a little hectic, especially after we were booted from uh, the farm that was featured in Sovereign Living the Show. We've mm-hmm. been in an apartment in downtown San Marcos. So we're gonna bring the bus home, find a piece of property, park the bus there, start farming again, which we're kind of fiending for, mm-hmm. and uh, really take a uh, focus really hard on Brave New Books and make it as successful as we can. Yeah, I think it's exciting. Uh, I'm glad to, that you guys are doing this. And uh, it's your third tour, but your first tour with a bus. Yes. And uh, you now have a full-size, this is not a short bus, this is a full-size... 40 feet. Yeah, 40 feet. Wow. I think the truck that we drove up here was 27 feet in the trailer section, so even it's even longer than that thing. Um, and that was Pretty a big truck. Car. 
So yeah, it's a big it's a big vehicle. How many miles are on this truck? Uh, this uh, bus? I'm just curious. Around two hundred thousand. Wow. Now it's a diesel though, so uh, that's just getting broken. Do those in. go longer? Okay, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know. The that. engine is. I mean, everything I else breaks down at the break. same same speed um, on a diesel <laughs> as uh, as a regular vehicle, but the diesel engines will tend to run much longer. Usually, it's not an engine that goes huh. on a car yeah. anyway. It's something else. You yeah. know, when your tranny's gone, you know, you've got a lot of replacement. It's costs. a tank. It's a Ford a T four 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 E T forty four four E, which I. I mean, to be honest, That's I'm big. not totally mechanical, um, but I think this is going to force me to uh, to dig in. I'll probably maybe take a class at a local community college, mm-hmm. diesel mechanics, just the basics, because we're going to be traveling around the country. The last thing I want is my family to be stranded, and it's something that I needed to learn anyway with the whole self-sufficiency, do-it-yourself yeah, ethic. Sure. I uh, don't want to have to rely on a mechanic every time. Yeah, I can't even change my own oil, so <laughs> I'm glad you're in this role and, and not me. Sure. Uh, but th- you already had a breakdown, actually. It was That's yesterday, right. the first day, you took uh, ownership, took possession of this uh, the Bitcoin bus, and then breakdown. What happened? Well, I had a mental breakdown. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I actually took it pretty well. Uh, uh, we picked up the bus, drove it uh, away from uh, Kelly and Jeff's place, and sure enough, about 30 minutes later, started puttering on the side of 101 and a quick plug for the free state project we were stranded on the side of the road we posted about it on facebook Catherine did and about five minutes later a free stater drives by messages her husband and tells her husband hey uh i just saw john and cat on the side of the road can you check in on them and then about 15 minutes later two other free staters drive up Bring us a pizza, a couple juice boxes, and some fruit. <laughs> Roadside assistance at its finest. It's, it's really incredible. great to be around such a strong community. Yeah, there's nothing, I mean, there really is nothing like it uh, anywhere in the world. And, uh, of course, it's only going to get better as more people move here. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just, it's so great to uh, to be a part of it. And it is that easy. I mean, there's a Pork 411 where you can call a phone number and leave a message. And then hundreds of people receive, even people outside of New Hampshire monitor Pork 411. Mm-hmm. Uh, people receive these messages. And there's, I, there's over the years, I've been listening to these Pork 411 messages. It's not uncommon for somebody to have a breakdown, and then within 10 minutes, yeah. they call back saying, I'm good. You know, They got yeah. taken care of. Somebody called them back. It's pretty cool. Um, so it's it's pretty awesome. So you had people come and help you out, and then you got the bus back on the road. How, how did that uh, happen? Thankfully, Jeff, the previous owner, uh, came out, and he spent a good six hours there with me trying all sorts of different things. It turned out it was likely caused by the fuel being there dirty i should have put a lot more diesel in than i did for the first crew so it could mix in with the older fuel yeah. but one of the uh, filtered lines was really gunked out so we yep. took it off of the bus uh, cleaned it out with some wd-40 uh, jeff blew on it with his lips uh, i think he appreciated having another opportunity to get up close and personal <laughs> with this bus uh, that family really is is connected with this bus and it's uh, you know it's more than just a vehicle it was a home for them so yeah we're excited that that energy is kind of built into it. And it's been renovated on the inside, right? I mean, the, yeah, it's a converted school bus. It has rooms. It has a bedroom. It has a kitchen. It right. has so a shower. So how many seats are actually left in this bus? Because I mean, the bus would have had a bunch of seats in it previously. Seats. So how many is it there's down to? A, there's a couch size bench area that's made with the bus benches. Another mm-hmm. one that's like an L shaped nice couch section. And then there's a table that's made with two of the bus seats. And then there's three bedrooms. They're small bedrooms, but the kiddos are excited about having a little playroom. And there's a master bedroom in the back. Yeah, they um these they are small bedrooms, but it is uh, it's an amazing thing. <laughs> yeah, and I've slick. I've been in there, and it's it, you know the uh, the master bedroom is in the back. It basically covers the back end of a bus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'd say it's about a square uh, space, maybe what I I don't know eight feet by eight feet, something like that. Um, but yeah, yeah managed to uh, to make it. Yeah, it's. I'm a little bit nervous about uh, the claustrophobia aspect. Cat is super pumped about it, but I think our idea is. To set up on a piece of property and for the property to be our, our living room and to spend more time yeah. outside. The weather's always great in Texas, and uh, as many people know, we're way That's into right, gardening. In. We haven't been able to do it for quite some time, and uh, we're looking forward to, to being forced to get out. Because right now we're on a two-story apartment in downtown San Marcos, and mm-hmm. there's all sorts of parks and cool things to do, but it's a pain in the neck to pack up the kids, to grab the diaper bag and take a lunch and all sorts of stuff. So we're going to have the the world will be our backyard. Yeah, that's right. You'll just, uh, instead, you just load them into the vehicle, which already has all that load stuff, and off you go. Everybody on the bus, good, great, grand. So uh, you're going to go to another mechanic, or you're going to a mechanic tomorrow. A to free kinda- stater. To, that's very cool to yeah. uh, to kind of have the bus checked out, right? Like maybe, maybe give it a tune up or something like that prior to hitting the road. Is that the plan? 
Yes, there was a problem with one of the brake lines that Jeff uh, did a repair on, but he wants to. We want to be extra safe and, sure. and go make sure that that's solid. We are going to be driving through some mountains in North Carolina, so we definitely want to make sure the brakes are in working order. And then I'd like to get the fuel lines cleaned out and all sorts of stuff. I'm, I mean, I'm learning as I go, so I'm trying to soak up as, as much as I can. And when anybody's under the hood, I'm going to be right there with them. Uh, Get my hands dirty. And, of course, uh, offering to pay in Bitcoin as well. And uh, many Free State Project participants already accept Bitcoin. In fact, uh, the folks here from WageCan were uh, sort of in the Keene Activist Center area here, the other portion of the uh, the studio. And they were talking to some of the other activists. And they're like, you guys all use Bitcoin? And, of course, everybody says, yeah. because You almost, don't? Of course. We all do. Almost everyone in the liberty movement up here, it seems like. I'm sure if we tried, we could find somebody who's like, I don't know, Bitcoin. But, uh, I'm about the gold standard. Yeah, I, I'm sure somebody like that exists. I just don't know who they are. Well, Seems like everyone takes Bitcoin in the liberty movement. In there's New bound to be somebody who hasn't set up a wallet yet yeah. um, that is still, you know, yeah, I they're think probably it's living in Grafton or something like that. <laughs> Poor Graftonites, they're doing such a great <laughs> job up there. I don't know why you want to go. They after are them. doing a great job. I'm not. I'm not down in the uh, the folks in Grafton, but there is some truth to the statement that it, that's where the activists go to disappear. I think that people who want to, well, what they're doing there is they're trying to collect a large amount of liberty folks and essentially brute force the government. Yeah, <laughs> and it's fun to watch. Peaceful force, yeah. of course. So we've got uh, John Bush here with us from uh, the unconventional, or excuse me, unconventional Bitcoin bus tour. Also of Brave New Books, soon to be the proprietor as of May 1st. He's here with us. If you got a question for him, because he's got a lot of activism under his belt, he's been arrested and all that stuff, been to court. You know, you've gone through the, Too many the ringer. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. Also a Free State Project participant as well. New, Relatively new signer compared to uh, Catherine. 855-450-FREE. More coming up. Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at survivormax.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. 
You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll-free to join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And I don't think I've mentioned we've got Skype as well. You can Skype into the show tonight at Skype username lrn.fm. Uh, Ian and Mark in studio with you as always. Our special guest host is John Bush from the Unconventional Bitcoin Bus Tour that's about to kick off uh, here in New Hampshire and travel all the way down to Austin, Texas. Uh, John's actually out right now showing off the uh, Bitcoin bus to our visitors from uh, California, from wagecan.com we were talking about earlier. It's very cool. Getting I, some pictures before they take off. Yeah, yeah. I went in. I stepped inside the bus myself. It's actually the first time I've been in there. Oh, really? It's, uh, it's pretty cool. I took a tour a couple of years ago when it was still the unschooled bus. Let's go to the phones, to the fun. You can bring up what you want here on Free Talk Live. You know what? I don't even know what's in the news. I've been running around doing Bitcoin bus related stuff all day today. I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got a few things from a few days ago. Anyway, Andrew's with us in Birmingham. Hello, Andrew. You're on Free Talk Live. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hey. Um, wanted to ask a quick question about Bitcoin, but first wanted to say that uh, last time I called in, I was talking about the federal uh, tax on wages and y'all are a bunch of haters, first off, because I let all my employees know that this is a voluntary business. They can work there. If they don't like the wage they're getting paid, they could leave at any time. And uh, you may recall I was paying them, like, not the best wage in the world, but, I mean, we're in Alabama, and, the you know, what they're getting in addition to their wage, like, a lot of them um, – you know, I'm training them on, you know, business and economics and how to be an entrepreneur and a bunch of stuff they never learned in school and really investing in them. And no one is working in my business uh, for like a, the long term. Like I expect a high attrition or a, a low attrition rate rather. And everyone knows that. And so uh, the fact that I would not give that uh, one gal a raise in the immediate term you don't know enough information to make a judgment wasn't that the callers that were giving you trouble about that one i mean i I recall someone someone called after the fact and i think you like just sort of blindly agreed with him to say yeah you know i think that that's that's not how i remember the call at all Um, well that's how i remember it i went back and listened to it but that's fine i I don't really care my question more well i I think what the caller was saying was that the 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 young lady wanted a raise and your reason for she blamed western civilization's problems on you you're what's wrong with uh, the rich people right and i i remember that and uh yeah I, i remember her having some problem that i said well you know i did mention that to the guy um but i don't feel like you know, if I I don't feel like I took her side in the the the, the in the debate. Well, I think the uh, caller's well, point was, uh, and I've, it's been a while since this call happened now, yeah. but uh, but yeah, I right. you know if I'm recalling, uh, somebody called in later on to point out that you had made some kind of statement during your call about how the the amount that she was asking for was was like nothing to you. 
but then later on right. you gave reasons why you wouldn't do it because of the uh, because of the federal government. But so it seemed like a bit of a contradiction right. where on one hand you said it was nothing, but then on the other hand you made it oh, out yeah, to be a big now, deal. Yeah. So that was their point, That's and right. that now, was what if, I agreed if with. She was an illegal alien, and I didn't have to pay FICA tax. Like I basically just had to pay my quarterly taxes, and I informed all of my employees. And I said, hey, look, this week, guess what? All of you are getting your payroll, but the federal government is getting paid, you know, three weeks worth of your wages. So, you know, uh, just take what you got paid right now and multiply that times 1.5. You know, that could be going in your pocket. That's your money that federal government is taking from me to pay to them that I can't give to you. And that was my whole point. You know, I can't give her a raise because – you know, we're a startup within the past year. I have a ton of overhead and debt expenses that I have to pay. Like, if I could pay them, you know, $80,000 a year, I would if that was what the job was worth. But it, it's not, and that's just not the situation. So there's a lot more that goes in, into wage earnings than – you know, the face amount of whatever the hourly rate is that you're going to pay someone. And that's yeah. the whole point. Yeah, I have a lot more sympathy for, uh, you know, that position, the, empl the position of the employer in many cases than the employee who just wishes to get paid more. But um, one of our difficulties here is is that we can only take what's said on the air and then interpret that however That's it is. Right. And, you know, sure. there's moment by moment. I understand what it's like being on live radio. This is just, you know, among your first time probably right. being on the air. So, you know, every word That's that right. comes out of your mouth isn't going to be precisely what things the way things are. You haven't had an hour to explain things. I, I get that. It's, it's difficult. But at the same right. time, it can be... Um, I find one of the best ways to uh, to convince people of things is to agree with them on one issue and then attempt to change their minds on sort of the greater issue, if, they, if you know what I mean. Well, that's probably why you have a better marriage than I do. So, <laughs> anyway, well, look, uh, the, Mark, the reason I'm calling is that you mentioned, I think, yesterday or the day before that – you sent the government a letter in the in the mail. Oh no, no! That, Shoot that man! It came across as that as though that was uh, not a joke. Okay, go ahead. What are we talking oh, about here? Sorry, was that a joke or was it, that it not was a, a joke? complete joke? What are we talking about here? Oh, okay. Crap. <laughs> so well, on anyway, the air, so on the air yesterday. I, I okay, so then. Well, anyway, my, my what are we talking was, about here? What letter are you referring okay. to? Okay, so um, I was teasing about how some people will send uh, letters to the IRS saying one thing or another, you know, sort of absolving themselves of playing, uh, paying taxes, you know, making sure that the government knows, I don't know, what their name is, what their address <laughs> is, what their social security number is, and then saying that they're not going to pay taxes. <laughs> and I find this to be, you know, a really bad technique for... Uh, Get, you know, stopping to pay taxes. And I know that there are people out there that advocate this technique, and I was trying to kind of tease, but I guess I just didn't uh, explain my joke well enough. Well, it's, I, I mean, I guess you didn't. I don't know. For some reason, I thought that you really had such a letter, and, uh, <laughs> which, which is fine with me. I mean, I wish I had the balls to send that kind of letter, but I was going to ask you the question of, you know, what if, because as I understand, I don't, you were asking just a moment ago, like, who doesn't have a Bitcoin wallet yet? I don't, because if, if, even if I accepted Bitcoin at my place of business, you know, how would I spend it? I can't spend on produce or like whatever. No one who I buy my cost of goods sold from accepts Bitcoin. So I would kind of be stuck with it. I mm -hmm. wouldn't exactly know what to do with it. John so, Bush, so maybe you have an as answer. As, as a man who has driven uh, across the country multiple times and spent only Bitcoin, uh, any suggestions for Andrew here? Yes, there are a multitude of practical Bitcoin applications, and one of them is buying your groceries with a Bitcoin with a gift card that you purchased with Bitcoin. So my family uh, predominantly buys groceries at Whole Foods. It's an organic, natural grocer all over the country. And we go to gift.com, G-Y-F-T dot com, and we buy gift cards with Bitcoin, and we turn around and we use those gift cards 
at the grocery store. And this is such a seamless transaction that you can do it literally in the line. You can also get Amazon.com gift cards. You can get gift cards to Target yep. as well. You so, can get big discounts at Amazon by using purse.io. Purse.io, yeah. Yep. Using that. For about sure. a 20% discount on everything at Amazon by using purse.io. But of course, if you do Bitcoin. that, then Free Talk Live doesn't get a cut. Uh-huh. <laughs> that much is true, but I'm, I'm just talking about the realities yeah. of using Bitcoin. Sure. And uh, for the things that it doesn't work on, you can uh, use the, you know, the, Freddie was just on um, talking, excuse me, Frankie uh, was just on talking about yeah. uh, Wage Can, uh-huh. W E. W-A-G. W-A-G. Bitcoin debit card. Yeah, and it works. It works perfectly. And then if you don't have a wallet yet, you can get one so easily. The one that I would recommend is Airbits. Check yeah. them out at airbits.co. You can get it on the Google Play Store or the Apple iTunes Store. That's this the wallet, best wallet, hands down, for yeah, newbies. It sets itself apart because it also has a Bitcoin merchant accept, a merchant a merchants that accept Bitcoin. It has a directory for them. So no matter where you are, if you're in San Diego, Austin, Texas, up here in New Hampshire, it shows you geographically the locations that are close in your area that accept Bitcoin. And chances are, if you're in a major city especially, uh, there'll be restaurants. There'll be Birmingham, Alabama is a pretty independent town. There'll probably be some places that accept Bitcoin. Yeah, the cool thing is you can download the Airbits wallet, install it on your smartphone. Uh, Do you have a smartphone, Andrew? Yes. Okay. So you download this wallet, open it up. Even though you don't have any Bitcoin yet, it's still going to show you all Mm -hmm. the different businesses that you could go to to actually spend Bitcoin uh, were you to actually acquire some. And then at least you've got the wallet for when and if you decide you want to grab some Bitcoin. You can load it up anytime you want. I'll send you some Bitcoin. If you tweet at me at at SovBTC, your Bitcoin address, Uh, I will send you $5 worth of Bitcoin. Whoa, that's incredibly generous. Wait, now. Don't let anybody else call in for that offer there. Is this only for Andrew? Or is this only for Andrew? That's right. (laughs) (laughs) It's not for Andrew. It's for the first person who tweets in claiming to be Andrew. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. We need a proof of identity, social security number, (laughs) thumbprint. Good luck, Andrew, and thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate (laughs) it, man. Uh, There you go. 855-450-FREE. John Bush, you sticking with us? Yes. All right, he's going to stay. And we'll talk to him more about the tour, and you can ask him whatever you want because we are here doing Free Talk Live, and I'm sure there's something in the news that we can talk about here coming up in moments. 855-450-FREE. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose-to-nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24-hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription-strength medicine available over-the-counter. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Kane and the Shire at the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, April 16th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.48 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,208 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $229. Antiwar.com reports, fresh off his visit to the White House, Iraqi Premier Haider Abadi expressed serious concerns about this Saudi attack on Yemen, warning it could quickly escalate into a region-wide sectarian war. Facing non-stop sectarian war themselves, Iraqis are understandably sensitive to anything that might make matters even worse. Abadi claimed to have spoken to President Obama about this and said the U.S. shares his concern on the war. The White House was quick to deny this, however, saying they have no problem with the Saudi war at all. That's unsurprising, of course, because while they haven't exactly publicized the fact, the U.S. military is participating in the war. Saudi ambassador to the U.S., Abdel al-Jubir, slammed the criticism of his country's war, saying a body should focus on the problems in his own country and not worry who the Saudis are invading at any given moment. The U.S. being on Iraq's side against Sunni insurgents in that country and backing Saudi Arabia's Sunni coalition in a attacking Shiites in Yemen is making their regional position harder and harder to justify to the nations therein. The U.S. has long done whatever seems expedient at any given time in the Middle East, which somehow always seems to be war. But as their interventions grow, the lack of justification for them is becoming more and more obvious. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports low-wage earners in multiple industries on Wednesday gathered to demonstrate from coast to coast against present minimum wage levels as part of a two-year-old campaign known as the Fight for $15 per Hour. Workers in the fast food, healthcare, retail, and other industries organized the rallies in about 200 U.S. cities such as New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, and Los Angeles. The tax day rallies advocated by labor unions varied in participation from a couple dozen to thousands of marchers. Wednesday's rallies were notable particularly for employees in the fast food industry who have long been spearheading efforts to bump the minimum wage, which is set by each state's government as long as it conforms to the federal minimum. Elizabeth Owens, a 56-year-old former industry worker and New York resident, said, I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at McDonald's, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Burger King. And I was making $423 a week after taxes. It's just not enough. In New York State, the minimum wage is $8.75 per hour. Recently, several employers like Walmart and McDonald's have taken steps to boost their minimum wages. McDonald's said its wage increase will take effect in July and ensure that every employee will earn at least $1 more than the minimum hourly wage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. The Houston Chronicle reports police officers fatally shot a man who led them on a car chase Wednesday morning in northeast Harris County, Texas. According to a Harris County Sheriff's Office spokesman, the chase began about 10.40 a.m. Houston police tried to pull over the driver of a blue Chrysler 300 due to suspicious activity, including two unsafe lane changes. As they approached the car, the driver fled. A chase ensued through northeast Houston, and the driver eventually struck two vehicles. Officials said the driver got out of the car and officers told him to raise his hands. He then appeared to reach back inside the vehicle. That's when officers opened fire on him, firing 10 to 12 rounds. The man died at the scene. No weapon was found in the car. The slain man was identified as Frank Shepard, a 41-year-old barber and father of three. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
After logging onto the Xbox One game console of one of his classmates' homes, 12-year-old Michael Cutler admitted to reporters this week that he really does not have the slightest clue about what his friend's name could be. I mean, his name might be Brian. No, wait, Brian's my other friend, the one with the PS4. Yeah, if I'm being totally honest, there's no way I can tell you his name. Not a chance. Noting that the boy had, quote, an absolutely huge HDTV and a bunch of games his mom won't let him play, Cutler confirmed that he could recall only the faintest details about his friend, including the fact that his mother makes chocolate chip cookies and that he has a dog of some kind. He's got Killer Instinct, Assassin's Creed, Battlefield 4, and Titanfall? Man, that game's awesome. Anyway, I've just been calling him Flamethrower because that's his gamer tag. Hopefully he doesn't catch on. Hey, can I stick around for a few more hours? So close to beating this. This is the Onion News Network. We are back with more Free Talk Live. We'll, of course, take your calls about whatever's on your mind. Coming up, a story that some people are going to find disturbing about a photographer who took photos of a family through their windows for a period of a year. He turned it into an art exhibit, and it went to court. Huh. We'll let you know how the judge decided in that case here in a little bit. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. And with you in studio tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. We also have John Bush joining us from Austin, Texas. Hey, John. Yahoy. You are kicking off a bus tour for our listeners just now tuning in. You can go to Uncoinventional, Uncoinventional.com to follow the Bitcoin bus tour, the first ever Bitcoin bus tour. You've been on other Bitcoin tours. This is your third Bitcoin only mm -hmm. tour where you your goal is to output only Bitcoin to pay for everything essentially that you and your family uh, need. Is this your first time you've taken the whole family on the tour or is it always the whole family that goes Every with time you? we got our two toddlers with us. We we travel in a pack and they, they love traveling. In fact, Aliana made her first Bitcoin purchase at oh, really? the Free Your Mind conference in Philadelphia. Uh, I spoke at the conference, talked about Freedom Cells, this uh, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer mutual aid society concept we're pushing. And while I was talking, Kat and the kiddos were talking to the vendors outside. So one of, one of our shticks for these tours is we talk to merchants and businesses, restaurants, stores, and encourage them to accept Bitcoin. And uh, she was one for three, and the one person that did accept it, Aliana, bought a little heart necklace and Kat helped her through it, but she actually did a little swipe on the Airbits wallet and made her first Bitcoin purchase. Very exciting. So, uh, and, and this is another first with you guys getting the Bitcoin bus. Uh -huh. It used to be known as the Unschool bus. It was gifted to you, which it was, was super gifted. generous. Yes, we're extremely grateful. The, the bus uh, meant a lot to them, so we are very excited to carry on the tradition of, of families. And, of course, we're promoting unschooling as well. We're yeah. unschooling our children and uh, it's life-led learning, experience-based learning. The parents act as facilitators uh, for the kids' interest. We don't have a top-down curriculum. There's a lot of people that homeschool, but sometimes the parents are just as authoritarian as the government. Yeah, that's uh, no good. I still think it's preferable to, to have the parents being the authoritarian ones to the, some random government stranger uh, pushing propaganda and indoctrination. But nonetheless, we think uh, uh, the best spirit is that of laissez-faire, and we're trying to live that consistently in the way that we educate our children. Let's go to the phones to the fun here. Uh, let's talk to Joe listening in Georgia. Joe, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Mark and John Bush. Yes, uh, great to be on. I just want to say I'm a very strong supporter of I'm sorry, you just, uh, you went to very, very, you went from being understandable to very, very quiet uh, I don't know if you plugged in a headset or something like that. If so, you might want to unplug that. Can you hear me okay now? It's pretty terrible, actually. Not really, no. It's really bad. Can you hear me now? That's oh, better. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I just want to say I'm a big Ted Cruz supporter. I think he's you. A, I really call myself a Reagan Thatcher Cruz supporter. What do you I What do you like Ted about uh, Ted Cruz? Isn't he just like yet another Republican? No, I think he's a strong conservative. I think he's for you know less government, less taxes, more freedom, and I just think he'll be a great president for the American taxpayers. But conservatives and, aren't well, for you know, less government. I mean, they they want like war and bombing and things like that, right? Well, not me. I want uh, <laughs> I want less taxes, less government, more freedom, and now, I think I don't know want that. Much, but... I don't know anything about Ted Cruz. I've heard his name before. Is this the now? Is he the guy that actually supports immigrate more immigration freedom, or does he want to crack down on the borders? No, he wants to 
strike down. Well, that they doesn't sound like down. freedom He's, to me, sir. I mean, that sounds like uh, less than freedom. That sounds like the crackdown on freedom. Why would you— Anti-free market. Yeah, I mean, that's terrible. Don't, don't we want free people well, to be able to come here? Well, I think uh, we got, we've got got to, too many now. I oh, think, so I see what you're saying. Just, you want freedom for Joe, but you don't want freedom for other people around the world. Is that right? No, I want freedom for everybody. Oh, no, you don't. I you just said that. you wanted to crack down on people that wanted to come here. That means you want to put those people in jail. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> what do you want, want to do to them? Well, Joe, the only way we can keep them out is uh, more Border Patrol agents. Lots and lots of Border Patrol yeah. agents that we pay big paychecks to. they got to have trucks. They've got to have uh, armored vehicles. they got to have helicopters. We're talking about paying money for fences. It's money, money, money. Is what That is sounds how you, like big government to yeah, me, Mark. We're going to have to have roadside well, checks. You, these uh, Border Patrol agents and police officers. They already have, have to, that. We're going to have to pull people over. That, yeah, that's happening already. And we're going to have to check their IDs. And if that doesn't work, if we can't get rid of the millions of people that are here without the government's permit permission that way, then we're going to have to go house to house and start looking in people's houses. And that's going to cost more money for more agents, too. How much of my money are you going to take to pay for this Ted Cruz's plan? Well, how, who do y'all like? I, mean, I like Cruz. Who do, who do you think? Nobody. I like Vermin. Nobody for president. I like Vermin Supreme because he wears a, a rubber boot on his head and he says, free <laughs> ponies for everybody. He tells because, it like it is. Because that's what politicians do. They get up there, they say, we're going to kiss your butt and do everything that you'd like. And then they, then you find out, oh, they're lying. This isn't going to be the most transparent uh, administration. And they're not going to sh- uh, shut down Guantanamo. I believe his uh, one of his campaign slogans is that all politicians are vermin. But I am the vermin supreme. Yeah, that's it. So I personally find no need for the for the office of the presidency. I believe in in self governance, and I think the institution that was created by the founding fathers, uh, the U.S. Constitution, actually created. Uh, less freedom than there was before the U.S. Constitution. True. And since then, a large majority of the presidents have all belonged to these royal bloodlines. There's a lot of uh, research that's done on that, and most of them are members of this political privileged class that do nothing more than uh, increase the size and scope of government, including your hero, Ronald Reagan. Uh, so I would prefer to see a decentralized system where individuals, if they don't want to participate in foreign wars of aggression, if they don't want to subsidize the police state, the NSA, they can choose to opt out and form their own systems of uh, mutually beneficial voluntary cooperation. Is that something that you might support? (laughs) Well, I tell you, y'all have quite some novel ideas. Uh, I like your idea on freedom, but uh, don't you have to have have somebody's presence? Nope. No, no thanks. You, you don't have to, but there's uh, going to be somebody. I think is probably a better way yeah, is to well, phrase it. Well, is that that well, there will who be? Do you, who do you like? I don't like any. Who do you like as the current? Well, Nobody. Well, but you got to be somebody, don't you? I, I'll vote I really, for Vermin Supreme. I probably will vote for the guy with the rubber boot on his head because uh, <laughs> ultimately, uh, how much worse could it get, right? <laughs> but um, I, I would agree with you. Somebody will be in the presidential, uh, you know, seat probably come 2017. But uh, do we need a president? No, I don't need a president. I don't need somebody telling me what to do. I don't need somebody extracting my wealth from mm-hmm. me without my permission. It's not just the president. The Congress will do that just I fine. I don't need without them either. <laughs> I don't need any of them. I don't want any of them. I don't want their services. I don't want it. whatever it is that they want to provide to me. I'm not interested in their bombs and their wars and their checkpoints. Their IRS, and their, their Department of Justice, Department right. of Education, Department it. of Homeland Security. They're all a bunch of rules that I don't have any interest in uh, following. I don't consent to being ruled by these people. They're strangers to me, and my mom told me not to talk to strangers. So. The best, the best <laughs> way to handle it when you call this show, Joe, is just to say, I know all politicians are a bunch of liars and thieves, but I kind of like this liar and thief <laughs> a little more than the rest of the relative. liars and <laughs> That's well, really the way to handle it. And, uh, I appreciate you letting me come on your show, and y'all have a great weekend. Well, we will. Thank you so very much. Thanks, Joe. Thank Good you. luck, man. Thanks for the call tonight. Toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. Looking at, I thought that went pretty well, all things considered. It could have gone south. but Looking uh, at, at Ted Cruz's website here. He's just, a happy guy. Just under a little girl with American flag in her hand, hugging her, uh, hugging some sol- soldier oh, to whom she, she looks like it. she's related. It's cliche. There's, oh, yeah, it is cliche as hell. America. There's, uh, you know, the point is opposed to Obama administration's dangerous deal with Iran that would allow Iran to pursue nuclear weapons. Probably not true. Spearheaded a legislation passed unanimously by Congress and signed by the president to prevent known terrorists from entering the United States as ambassadors to the United Nations. What the hell? That doesn't sound freedom-oriented. <laughs> Successfully pressured the Obama administration to lift its unprecedented FAA bans on flights to Israel after ex- exposing the move as, in essence, 
an economic boycott of our He's strongest ally in Israel. the Middle East. Oh, yeah. My favorite is when we polish Israel's apple. Um, as he though, Israel. As though, yeah. They, they so all does Rand Paul, apparently. Yeah. The, 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 the Republicans love Israel. Mostly because they want Jesus to come back. And the <laughs> and money. <laughs> well, APAC. you think there's a lot of money? APAC? I have no idea. But nonetheless, it's really just, I mean, you know, it's another foreign country. Why should taxpayers be giving money to Israel when they shouldn't be giving money to, I don't know, Botswana? Yeah. I Even don't know. Gary Johnson said he was opposed to, he says he's opposed to military aid, and he kind of coaxes it to military aid, but I've put him on the spot, and he said that he favored foreign aid to Israel. Yeah, well, he's not really a libertarian, is he? Well, the problem is you'll get labeled an anti-Semite if you don't say that you that you support foreign aid to Israel. Well, I don't care what people label you as. As, as either, a Jew, screw you're, that. You're either against foreign <laughs> aid by the government or you're not. Be consistent. 855-450 free. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. Molly's been having four scoops a day, and she has slimmed down and gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. You can't believe oh, yeah. it. Her breath is better. She's just perkier. It's just so totally amazing. She's a gorgeous Springer Spaniel. She's 12 and a half years old. The last two, three years, she was really becoming very old, very slow, was very sad. I thought, oh, this is it. I was driving along one day, and I heard this person raving about Dynavite. Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. She's got life. She's got energy. She's got stuff. To give. She loves it. She chomps at every last single crumb. These ingredients are natural. The flax and the yeast cultures and the grains. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. We're on our third order now. We just want everybody to know about Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. 
LibertyRadioNetwork.fm. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free to join us here at 855-450-FREE or via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. You can join us online, of course, over at freetalklive.com. And also, if you are on the road, as John Bush is about to be with the family on the Bitcoin bus tour, the Unconventional tour, unconventional.com, his website, Having power for your power-hungry devices is always important, and the Pocket Power Plus can help you with that. It's a source of backup power that is so small, you can put it in your pocket or throw it in your purse or uh, your briefcase, because you're going to want this thing with you, because your phones and laptops are, as always, dying at inconvenient times. Uh, so if you got one of these things, it can help you out. In fact, it can even, in some circumstances, jumpstart a car. The Pocket Power Plus wow. even comes with the jumper cables uh, that you'll need to accomplish that task. Plus, it comes with a full accessory pack that's got most of the adapters you'll need for your cell phone or laptop. And you can go and get your Pocket Power Plus for half off by going to PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. And if you use coupon code FTL, you will save even more. So once again, Pocket Power Plus 9 9.com run electronic devices for hours or even days if you need to that's pocketpowerplus9.com coupon code FTL as we continue here on Free Talk Live there you know there's stuff in the news to talk about um, the unconventional tour is about to kick off here as soon as the bus gets checked out you guys are taking it into a mechanic uh, tomorrow we spent way too much time today trying to get the mm. uh, the logos on the bus because there are several great groups that are sponsoring you John Bush uh, can you talk briefly about who's behind this tour Yes, uh, well, WageCam was here in studio. I mentioned the AirBits wallet. They're one of our sponsors of Love the tour. Love AirBits. Oh, man, it's great. It. Check them out at airbits.co. It's the Bitcoin wallet and directory. And this time around, we flew up, and we used cheapair.com to purchase our plane tickets and our hotel stay uh, when we stayed in Philadelphia. Now, these guys are great. Not only are they a merchant that accepts Bitcoin, a lot of times people accept it just because they want to save on the transaction fees, but... Their CEO, Jeff Klee, whom I interviewed on our last trip, we visit him out in California, they uh, actually are totally diehard Bitcoin folks. They do a blog. They do a, a blog that features different people. Will Pangman, you mentioned him mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, he was featured as one of their Bitcoin guys of the month. And uh, definitely check out CheapAir.com. They were the first ones to uh, to use flights uh, for Bitcoin, to book it's flights for Bitcoin. basically the only way to get a hotel or um, airline, you know, airlines with uh, Bitcoin. Expedia does it as well, but they're just not as in tune. And whenever you call the service for Expedia, I don't know if this has changed, but they have no idea what Bitcoin is. You call oh, Cheap Air, they're like, sure, uh, will you send us an address that we can do a refund yeah, they, if you have they, any they problems handled, like that? They're yeah, they handled it with it. me. Yeah, and you get a cheaper price too. And then uh, nice. Bitmain Technology, if anybody's still into mining, Bitmain is making it practical for the little guy to get involved. Uh, you may not make a whole ton of money, but it will allow the decentralization of the Bitcoin network, which is extremely important. There's a lot of uh, large firms that have massive warehouses and million dollars worth of miners, and they're they're pumping out thousands of terahash. Well, we don't want Bitcoin to get centralized uh, or for a large percentage of people to have control over the network. So you can do your part to decentralize the network with some affordable, efficient reliable machines and their website's bitmain.com these are the people that are helping us to make this trip possible so we uh we're going to get these you know all those advertisers you just mentioned plus lrn.fm we're going to get all those turned into uh adhesive vinyl graphics for the side of the bitcoin bus yes. that was our goal today and unfortunately that didn't work out either so not only has the bus <laughs> broken down uh the first time you drove it basically but now the bus is you know you're gonna have to delay your plan to leave New Hampshire by an extra day at least in order yes. to leave room to try to get the uh, the graphics done because what happened was we went down we we're actually going to use the same guy uh, who did Marv now our longtime listeners will remember Marv the mobile authority resistance <laughs> vehicle uh, that was the the RV that Pete Nadamo from CopBlock.org took around before actually before CopBlock. Uh, mm -hmm. Marv was used for what was called Motorhome Diaries, and then later on it was Liberty part, on Tour. Yeah, part of Liberty on Tour and CopBlock days as well. And yeah, this was like five years ago, or at least now five or six years ago, I think. 
And uh, and so the same guy who did the graphics for Marv, we contacted him because he's in the, the Keene area, and uh, he was really, really busy, and, uh, you know, it, it almost looked like he couldn't fit us in, but he did make some room for us, and, you know, we sent him all the graphics, and we were a little later than we were supposed to be getting in the graphics, and I felt like the dude was bending over backward for us, but he was still willing to go for it, and so we went down there today, uh, brought the uh, brought the bus on down, and and then as we were there and he was loading up the graphics and getting ready to print, something went wrong with the computer. And like he was a little wow. bewildered and, and frustrated, obviously, because, you know, he'd put other plans on hold so he could do this. And now he's got to yeah. do tech support on the computer. And uh, so we waited around for a while. We went out and grabbed some lunch and he couldn't get it to get his software working. So now his whole, you know, his other clients that were waiting to get printed yeah. are... You are, guys uh, uploaded a virus on this man's computer? No, Is that what you're telling me? No, we <laughs> sent him graphics. We sent him graphics. Um, but man, he was super nice about it, and he was turned, a Ron Paul guy. Turned out he was Ron Paul. You saw that when you were there, and you, st- yeah. you struck up uh, struck up a conversation yeah, with him. We chatted so. politics. I've found as many people that visit the Shire, the Free State, New Hampshire, that uh, there's kind of a culture here of independence, light libertarianism, just in the folks that are here. And then you throw in what 1,700 activists that are already here, and uh, you got yourself some magic. Yeah, this yeah. guy was a sweet guy. And he was. Yeah, it was, was a shame cool. we ultimately couldn't use him. I mean, there's a small chance that tomorrow he'll call us and say it's all working, but uh, I'll drive right back out from yeah. Hollis. <laughs> in the mean, in the meantime, you've uh, you're going to be bright and early up tomorrow morning. You're taking the bus to the shop, calling around different graphics uh, guys because basically you want to kind of get this wrapped up as quickly as possible so you can head out on the tour. Yes, wrapped up is a wonderful pun. Yeah. There. I don't know if that was wasn't my intention. <laughs> yeah. Ian doesn't actually make intentional jokes. Sometimes okay. I do. <laughs> be, be nice. You'll prefer- yeah, we're trying to get out on the tour, get on the road, and uh, we're a little bit set back, but thankfully there's some strong community, and uh, we're staying at our good friends Mike and Marmar and Hollis. They always put us up. We like to visit them. So we're, we're in good hands here in New Hampshire, and I'm confident that we'll be able to work out a solution. And and like I said, we're, we're talking to everybody about Bitcoin. This guy's on the verge of Bitcoin. I told Ian if somebody just goes over there and, and holds his hand and sets him up with BitPay. You're talking about the graphics guy? The graphics yeah. guy. That's always the hang-up I've found. We've talked to hundreds of merchants about Bitcoin and, and maybe have like a 5 to 10% closing ratio, which isn't too bad. And they always say, well, you know, I, gotta, I have bills to pay. I have right. overhead. So it's a quick way to overcome that objection if you're in the sales. You know, it's all about overcoming objections. You just let them know, hey, well, there's this great service, BitPay. That allows you to receive Bitcoin and immediately convert it to U.S. dollars and not to the be only deposited ones, right? in your bank two days later. Coinbase, Coinbase does it as well. And there's, and there's a couple another others. one, and one or two others Circle. as well. Circle, Circle does it. They're a little bit too uh, cozy with the with the man. Coinbase, Coinbase is, is co- too. cozy with the man, BitPay too. doesn't ask as many questions. They do the know-your-customer stuff okay. and ask for your tax ID number and stuff. But for anybody that's hesitant about accepting Bitcoin— there's really no reason not to. Not only will you save on these transaction fees, but there's this phenomenon whereby you set up Bitcoin, you share it with the world, and the Bitcoin community will flock and give you business just because they're excited about uh, giving Bitcoin to these new businesses. Yeah, there was a cool example of that at the party you threw at Brave New Books where uh, the, the pizza dude showed up with, yeah. from Domino's or whatever. And somebody, I don't know who it was that talked to him first, but somebody talked him into t- getting a Bitcoin wallet on his smartphone. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, this dude walked out of there with $40 worth of Bitcoin. Yeah. It, was, it was $40 when I stopped paying attention to how many yeah. people were, were giving him money. So maybe he ended up with 50 cool. or 60 but it was probably the biggest tip yeah. of his night. <laughs> it might be the biggest tip of his life. People yeah. just kept coming up. Like, you know, as soon as he got the Bitcoin wallet installed, he just held yeah. his QR code out for everybody. Right. And people just bam, kept bam, coming bam, up bam, and bam. just a dollar here, two dollars there. There's more coming up here in moments. John, you're staying for one more segment? That's Is right. That right. All right, so if you've got a question for John Bush, he's here with us, and then he's uh, heading out on tour at uncoinventional.com. We'll continue here in moments at freetalklive.com. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE if you want to join us on the radio waves. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light 
system today, complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231, and the Berkey Guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey Guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey Guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653. Or order online at GoBerkey.com. That's GoBerkey.com today. Free Talk Live's recent Bitcoin sale was a big success, so we decided to extend the 50% discount through April 17th. Free Talk Live was the first ad venue in the world to accept Bitcoins for ads. We love the concept of a value-based digital currency that allows people to actually control their own money. We introduced Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, to Bitcoins, and here's what he said. Free Talk Live is the premier voice for the peace and liberty Bitcoin will bring to the world. By broadcasting this message since 2011, Free Talk Live has been instrumental in creating the widespread adoption that we have today. If you need some advertising for your business, website, or organization, and you want to save half off, send me an email right now, mark at freetalklive.com. This is your chance to save 50% on national radio and podcast ads. Just pay with Bitcoin. Email mark at freetalklive.com. That's mark at freetalklive.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The FAA has issued a reminder that any plane can crash and kill you. Deputy FAA Administrator Serena Grant. This year, there will be more flights than ever. Any one of them could blow up in the middle of the sky without warning. That's why we're asking all Americans to tell their families that they love them before taking off. The agency also released a list of important questions to ask yourself or your seatmate during your flight, including should the wing be doing that? What is that whirring noise? And do all planes shake this much? They're reminding passengers that even the smallest amount of turbulence could mean you're headed toward a sudden explosive death. While hurtling through the sky at unimaginable speeds in a steel coffin can feel like gambling with your life, the FAA says there are ways to regain the illusion of control. If you're worried about crashing, why not switch your flight at the last second? It might just save your life or kill you depending on which plane crashes. And for those who aren't flying this holiday, the FAA has reminded everyone that a plane could fall out of the sky right on top of you at any moment. This is the Onion News Network. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free to join us here at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, a photographer goes to court for taking pictures of people through their windows and turning it into an art exhibit. We'll tell you how that uh, shook out here in a little bit. Our toll-free oh number is 855-450-FREE. Needless to say, they did not give him permission to take uh, the photos of them through their windows, but at the same time, they didn't close their blinds either. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, yeah, John Bush joining us here for this final segment with uh, with John, and then he's got to take off, get back to the family, and uh, we'll of course hope to see you back here in the Shire sooner rather than later. <sighs> Although uh, you're going to have your hands full down there in Austin, running the new Brave New Books store, and always doing all kinds of activist stuff. Let's go to the phones and to the fun, where we have Ralph on the line in Michigan. Ralph, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey Ralph, you're on the air. Go ahead. Listen, I was just, you're, you're sitting there talking about all the things you can do with Bitcoin, and there's one thing I didn't hear you say you could do with Bitcoin, and that's heat your chicken coop or your home. <laughs> 
Are you talking about mining You're Bitcoin? Pro- yeah, I was going to. I was going to say you're probably wondering how. I got a friend that mines bitcoins, and I, he's got like twelve, fifteen machines. Wow! And uh, that's dedication. He, he runs these things day and night, and he, he was, you know, he was having a problem because they were heating up. So what he did is he ran a ventilation system from where his shop is to his chicken coop, which is on the other side of the shop outside. Awesome. Yep. And uh, in the wintertime, he heats, he heats his chicken coop with the uh, heat that comes off those machines. And then, in, hmm. of course, in the summertime, he just vents it out into the air. Cool. But, uh, yeah, you can actually do this. Uh, there are people here in New Hampshire who have used their Bitcoin miners as supplemental heat uh, <laughs> units. I mean, essentially, to some extent, they're, you know, they're little electric heaters that uh, mm-hmm. generate money. Um I'd, I'd use one for my feet. It would be really cool. Just set my feet up. I wish we could do that in Texas, but uh, in te- I, well, I've ran a mi- mining operation. We actually have uh, 10 of them still going. We've had to turn really? them off since the price has ducked down. But yeah, at one point we had a good 60 machines. It was it was wow. pretty significant. Uh, it ended up being a total failure because the price dropped down, but I learned a lot and it, well, it's it not gained over a yet, major appreciation. It, it could come back up. Uh, unfortunately, we've been having to sell the old Bitcoin that we had in reserve to pay for the electric bills with the price down, but... Uh, the the heat in the little closet that we had it's a mining it's a hallway in the office that I had uh, it got up to like 115 Whoa. in a while and I had to spend a lot of money on cooling buying ACs mini splits yeah. like the one you got over there and uh, it's it's not for the faint of heart but I mentioned Bitmain earlier Th- these guys sell like a $300 machine that it's really quiet people could put it in a wouldn't recommend put it in your living room but it's it's not going to generate a whole lot of heat and it's important for people to to stick with this decentralization idea so you may not make a ton of money but you're you're basically contributing to the integrity it's of the activism network. activism more than anything That's else. Right. That's I right. mean, I, I've but, everybody I've ever heard of who's done Bitcoin mining has said they never made anything at it. So <laughs> lost. Um, I mean, you I'm know, sh- he, seems, he seems to be making money at it because you know he took some PVC. He's got a lot of PVC that he uh, collected from you know construction areas. How they throw small pieces away in that. Mm-hmm. He cuts them in half and he makes fins out of them and makes uh, those wind turbine. Small wind turbine things. Cool. He lives in Pennsylvania there, and uh, he's got a lot of open space there because it's by a by, an abandoned strip mine. But he's got all these wind turbines up nice. there along that, and that's how he makes his electricity to run this stuff. Oh wow, oh. that's a double bonus. Well, yeah, I mean, if you can make your own electricity oh. to run a Bitcoin miner, then it would make sense. Then, then you might actually be able to turn he's a profit on, on it. Yeah, you have, you had to have really cheap energy. The energy is eight cents, nine cents in a. San Marcos, Texas, which is where we were running ours, uh, and that was still uh, unable to do that. But some places have hydroelectricity, here. which really helps, and they're down to like five or four cents. But if you got ten cents plus, it's it ain't gonna happen. Hey, Ralph, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Aaron's listening in Manchester, New Hampshire. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Mark, and John yes. Bush. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, it's Darren. So Darren. I'm, I'm happy to. Um, I'm happy that you're going to be on Neocash Radio on Sunday. That's right. Uh, Darren from Neocash Radio, thanks for inviting me on uh, for what will be your 100th episode. I'm very excited about that. Thanks. Yes, we're all excited. So um, <clears throat> so I called because we were just chatting here in Manchester, and um, I think that people should, or at least in our community, especially some of the young people, younger people, I'm not, I don't consider myself young enough for this, but... Um, be, I think people should be lawyers. Um, our community has a lot of demand for lawyers, and they they um, they get a good, pretty good penny uh, when they do their services. So, if we had more competition, that's like a free market way of uh, bringing the price down. So, uh, that's that's pretty much what was going on over here. Well, unfortunately, the lawyer market's fairly restricted anyway. There aren't very right. many lawyers to begin with because there's a fairly difficult process. One barrier to, to entry. To, right. There's a high yeah. barrier to entry. And so, I mean, I, I support what you're saying. Yes, by all means, we should have more liberty-friendly lawyers available here in, in New Hampshire. But we had I, one move here from, uh, was it St. Louis, uh, I believe? Yeah, who, Lance. He ended up leaving because he couldn't get any business from liberty-oriented well, folks. Well, right. The problem is liberty people are also poor, and yeah. they don't have any money to pay a lawyer, and so... You got a, I don't know if it's like a catch-20 or whatever, but it's not good. Well, we we have some good lawyers that are here, and, um, and it, well, I'm sorry that I didn't know that guy left. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's pretty much all I've got to say, really, Ian, but I 
um, I'll, I'll be talking to you more over the weekend. All right, man. Look forward to it. That's Darren, uh, one of the hosts of Neo Cash Radio, another great uh, Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrency-oriented podcast uh, out there in the world of them. There are uh, several Check it out. from what yeah, I understand. There's a whole movement of them. It's yes. growing. So, yeah, lawyers. I mean, how's the, how's the lawyer lawyer and situation down there in Austin? Uh, do you guys have some liberty-friendly lawyers? Yeah, there's the there's quite a few attorneys that are there, uh, a lot that are more on the social justice, anti-police mm-hmm. brutality uh, I'm extremely impressed with Antonio Beeler's attorney. Of course, he's the activist that was arrested uh, three years ago on New Year's night, standing up for a girl that was being abused by a police officer. They accused him of spitting in his face. They originally had felony charges. They ended up dropping it down because he refused to plea, never take a plea. That's personal opinion, of course, but he was actually facing a minimum of 10 year, maximum two mm-hmm. to 10 years in jail, and he didn't take the plea the whole way through. They dropped it to a Class C misdemeanor, Excellent. and he won in court. He was found not guilty, and his attorney, Millie Thompson, woo, she was a firehouse. She definitely gave the city of Austin a run for their money. Did so she I'm, take it pro bono? No, she didn't take it pro bono, but a lot of these attorneys that are passionate about it, they work for far less than they're worth. That's good yeah, I, 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 it baffles me how Ian's always looking for this pro bono stuff. I found <laughs> one. Everybody I found else one. John in the Meyer. world. Right. John Meyer took the Robin Hood case and three other, uh, two or three other cases right. pro bono. All these other, all the, um, everybody else in the world deserves to get paid for the things they do, but not in Ian's world when it comes to lawyers, because they're dealing with the law, and law sucks. Well, no, no, I expect activists to not, uh, you know, get $300 an hour for their activism. I mean, it's nice if you can, but Gosh, if you care about liberty and freedom, then yeah, maybe you want to do something for the. It's a give and take. It's a give and take. You don't have to do. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to make ends meet if you're doing all, uh, all pro bono. But attorneys tend to make a lot of money. The ones that do well for themselves kind of can tithe some activists that are out there doing the grassroots stuff. I mean, this guy's an uh, a not. He's not retired, but he certainly could retire at this point in his career if he wanted to. And I understand the the young guys. They got to pay back the law school. This guy's probably Mm. already paid back his law school loans at this point. If he hasn't, then he's been doing a terrible job as an attorney, and I don't suspect that's the case. Uh, so, yeah, there are people out there who are willing to do things pro bono. And as far as I'm concerned, Mark, those are the best ones because the attorney that wants to charge you for their services, they may not necessarily believe in their chances. I would as, agree with you uh, as with heavily that. as somebody who's willing to take pro bono. And it's also still possible to reward an attorney taking something on pro bono because they might be able to be able to get attorney's fees if they win or countersue right. in civil court. They might be able to actually do fairly well. Right. I really good PR. I would and love to, a situation where, and, and this is obviously why you can't do it because the legal system's set up to screw everybody, um, but I, I'd be happy if I had some legal situation where I was at some point exonerated and we were able to take the, you know, whatever organization to court and get some money out of them. As far as I'm concerned, the lawyer can have it all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really so concerned 100% about cashing in. 100% of it. You know? Get, Unfortunately, you get, there are actually- $10 million? Break it in, pal. There are actually rules preventing them from doing that. So, mm. you know, if I guess if you would end up getting a portion of uh, whatever the payout was, and if you wanted to, you could probably then donate it to the lawyer. But there are certain rules in certain states, I guess. I don't know if it's all the states, but if an attorney takes in money for a client, that they can only keep up to like 60% or 66% or something like that. Something like that. 66% is a lot. John Bush, thanks for coming in on Free Talk Live. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, keep us in the loop as the uh, tour continues, will you? Yeah, we'll call in and uh, let you know what we're doing. That would be perfect. We'll look forward to it, and uh, don't forget to check him out over at uncoinventional.com. We'll continue with your calls about what you want coming up here on Free Talk Live. The results are in. For the treatment of nasal allergy symptoms, nothing is more effective than Nasacort. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour is prescription-strength medicine that's scent and alcohol-free with no harsh taste. It's not addictive and provides 24-hour relief of the worst nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion, with no prescription needed. And in a recent clinical study with Nasacort going nose-to-nose with Flonase, more people prefer Nasacort. For more information, visit Nasacort.com. Nasacort. Use as directed. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. 
Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps Helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live and plenty of time for you to dial in toll-free and join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three, and of course you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features that we have waiting for you there. The we tonight includes me, Ian. And me. Oh, hey, Mark. I didn't turn your microphone. It'd be on. nice if I had a microphone. Not used to you here. sitting over there. Yeah, indeed. Who are you again? Mark Edge. Excellent. Welcome uh, to the show, here, uh, listeners. We are here at eight fifty five four fifty free and at Skype at username lrn.fm. Oh, we had somebody on Skype, but he dropped off. So you can join us that way. Uh, here's the news that I've been teasing here tonight from NY Daily News, the New York Daily News story about a photographer who took photos of his neighbors. And they had their windows open, so it wasn't like he was creeping up next to the window to kind of peek through the blinds or something like that. He this. was creeping all right. He was in his own home taking pictures of them in their own home. And... Uh, it went to court, and he won. Here's the story from nydailynews.com. Want privacy? Buy shades. <laughs> Indeed. That was the message sent by a panel of appellate division judges Thursday when they tossed a lawsuit by a Tribeca family who said a photographer invaded their privacy by secretly taking their pictures for a year and then putting them into an exhibit, an art exhibit. 
Lensman Arnie Spenson acknowledged that he snapped the unguarded shots of Martha and Matthew Foster and their young children through the floor to ceiling windows of their loft. So very <laughs> very large windows. Floor, floor to, ceiling. to ceiling windows, okay. Which is across the street from his apartment. The judges said that Svensson's protracted lurking in the shadows of his darkened apartment was, quote, disturbing, unquote, (laughs) but neither a violation of criminal stalking laws nor a violation of the family's civil rights, as state law is now written because Svensson's photos were works of art, or as state law is now written because Svensson's photos were works of art. The Fosters and their neighbors became aware that they had been photographed when Svensson's pictures were exhibited at a New York gallery at a show called The Neighbors. The pictures show people in the seven-story modern building in everyday activities, taking naps, scrubbing floors, bathing toddlers. Their faces are mostly hidden. In an interview with photography blog Petapixel, Svensson said that he shot for the tiny nuances of gesture and posture that define who we are collectively. The subjects are to be seen as... He was able to get, I mean, you know, this is a real opportunity to sort of get a look at at people just sort of being very natural as Mm -hmm. opposed to being posing. Yeah, so many pictures are posed, and uh, I I think that there's, you know, there's art in it. I can totally see why these people feel violated. Well, I mean, I see why they feel violated, but it's hard to feel sorry for them. Their windows were open. I mean, if you want people to look inside your house... As they're walking by or if they live across the street, keep your windows open. They're well, inevitably going to look in at some point, even if it's an accident. I get the impression that these people are quite high. Um, and that High up? You mean on an electric yes, building? Yes, that, that they're several stories up and that he happens to also be several stories up. Yeah. So essentially, um, what they're doing is even more ill-advised. They're opening up their life to some you know people that are sort of there all the time that's true right so it's one thing to have your window to your kitchen open when some people walk by or whatever it's another thing entirely to keep your windows open all the time and your neighbors are constantly there your neighbors and there are probably a few dozen that can see into your home right like depending on how many people are living over across the way uh so in uh, let's see here in their decision The uh, appellate judges said that, quote, concerns over privacy and the loss thereof have plagued the public for over 100 years, but that the invasion of privacy of one's home that took place here is not actionable because the defendant's use of the images in question constituted artwork and were not used for advertising or in trade. So that's one of the uh, legal, I guess, factors around taking pictures as far as if you're in public you're capturing uh, pictures of people's uh, visages, their their likeness, and then if you use those photos for, let's say, to sell Coca-Cola or some other kind of product, then the courts would determine that those people in those photos were deserved of some kind of cut of the, the profits or the proceeds, or the, even if you didn't make money, if you tried to make money by using their likeness, that you would owe them something. I don't necessarily agree with that legal opinion, but that's generally the legal opinion of courts as I understand it. I, you know, being as uh, I'm a hardcore libertarian, there's no doubt about it. But when it starts for me, something really changes when somebody is making money off of it. Um, For me, like, for instance, uh, you know, if if I'm out uh, and I decide to, you know, for instance, uh, you know, play a song or something like that and they want to uh, charge you for it, uh, ASCAP BMI, um, you know, I think that's ridiculous. But when, you know, you're doing a concert, you probably should give credit where credit is due to the people who wrote the song or that, those sorts of things. You know what I mean? Yeah, but if I'm on the street, if I'm in the park in Central Square of Keene, New Hampshire, mm-hmm. and I uh, take a very well-framed shot of the uh, the Central Square monument or whatever yeah. and the things in the background, if I uh, you know, am a master of composition and have taken this excellent picture, but yet someone was walking with their family through the park, and I'm able to sell framed photos of this and make a little bit of money on it, why the hell should I owe them anything? I mean, they just happen to be walking through my my camera's capturing of photons. I, I think it's... I would agree with you. I think it depends strongly on um, how, how good of a picture you get of them and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But you think about many of these artists who shoot for, say, National Geographic and that 
um, you know, maybe they're getting a, a, a signed waiver from people, but they're probably not giving them a check for many of these uh, iconic pictures. Some of them come to mind of the uh, the Oklahoma family that uh, where the you know they're they're trying to flee the the Dust Bowl. That one comes to mind. The uh, the Afghan girl with the bright blue eyes. I'm sure these people didn't get any money for their iconic pictures. Well, right. I mean, how many of the news photographers that are capturing images of you know terrible things that are happening to people, for instance, have stopped for a moment to say, "Excuse me, I know your life is being torn apart right now uh, by this tornado or whatever, but can you just sign this release form for me?" I mean, how realistic is that? I yeah. don't believe that that happens very often. So I would draw the line that a picture could be sold, but um, without without consent of the the photographed, but that if you're using the picture to sell something, mm -hmm. I think it comes into a different realm. So if I see what you're you know, somehow or another you get a picture of me um, and sell Coca-Cola with it. Yeah, <clears throat> so it's being used over and over again in a more of a commercial manner. Yeah, something like that. And, and, and that certainly could be the way you could read this here because, again, the defendant in this case did not use the images for advertising or in trade. The court's decision continued, saying, quote, However disturbing it may be, it cannot properly, under the current state of the law, be deemed so outrageous that it went beyond decency and the protections of the civil rights law. They noted, however, that their decision should not be taken as an indication that they have given short shrift to the family's concerns, but said the family should take their objections to the legislature. Quote, in these times of heightened threats <laughs> <Get a lawyer. laughs> to, pre uh, to privacy posed by new and every new and ever, I think they mean, ever more invasive technologies, we call upon the legislature to revisit this important issue as we are constrained to apply the law as it exists. So they're suggesting that the legislature could make this kind of photography illegal, and then they would apply that law. The appellate decision upheld an earlier court ruling, which also tossed out the lawsuit. There was no immediate comment from the family on the decision. The I imagine they're not that pleased. The attorney uh, said the decision, quote, uh, the attorney for the artist, said the decision affirms what I've always believed, that photographs are expressive works under the First Amendment, and the sale of photographic prints are outside of the prohibitions of New York civil rights law. Wolf, who specializes in laws involving digital media, also said she disagrees with the appellate division's conclusion that the state civil rights law should be changed. She, she said, quote, the statute must balance First Amendment guarantees of free expression against privacy of one's and one's expectation of privacy in a dense urban environment must be factored in. And I hope she's right. I don't want to see these uh, laws change. Look, your privacy is your responsibility. And these people took zero responsibility for their privacy and then only after the fact complained that someone supposedly invaded it. Yeah. And I think that this case is really important for people to understand mostly what their um, sort of legally what their rights are as far as this goes. Um, children were photographed without their permission. And it's completely legal. In New York State, which is probably the most, as far as quantity of laws that a state has, probably the most tyrannical state out mm -hmm. there. So, of the United States, the 50 states in the United States. Um, y yeah, as far as being photographed, you have no right when you're in public or open yourself up to public view yep. to not be photographed. You want to not be photographed? Excellent. Get a burqa. Or get some curtains and, you know, make sure they're not wide open. So, you can share your thoughts with us here. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you think these people should be protected uh, by the law. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. Share your thoughts on privacy. It's Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at Alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. 
Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, April 16th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.48 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,208 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $229. Antiwar.com reports, fresh off his visit to the White House, Iraqi Premier Haider Abadi expressed serious concerns about the Saudi attack on Yemen, warning it could quickly escalate into a region-wide sectarian war. Facing non-stop sectarian war themselves, Iraqis are understandably sensitive to anything that might make matters even worse. Abadi claimed to have spoken to President Obama about this and said the U.S. shares his concern on the war. The White House was quick to deny this, however, saying they have no problem with the Saudi war at all. That's unsurprising, of course, because while they haven't exactly publicized the fact, the U.S. military is participating in the war. Saudi ambassador to the U.S., Abdel al-Jubir, slammed the criticism of his country's war, saying a body should focus on the problems in his own country and not worry who the Saudis are invading at any given moment. The U.S. being on Iraq's side against Sunni insurgents in that country and backing Saudi Arabia's Sunni coalition in attacking Shiites in Yemen is making their regional position harder and harder to justify to the nations therein. The U.S. has long done whatever seems expedient at any given time in the Middle East, which somehow always seems to be war. But as their interventions grow, the lack of justification for them is becoming more and more obvious. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports low-wage earners in multiple industries on Wednesday gathered to demonstrate from coast to coast against present minimum wage levels as part of a two-year-old campaign known as the Fight for $15 per Hour. Workers in the fast food, healthcare, retail, and other industries organized the rallies in about 200 U.S. cities such as New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, and Los Angeles. The tax day rallies advocated by labor unions varied in participation from a couple dozen to thousands of marchers. Wednesday's rallies were notable particularly for employees in the fast food industry who have long been spearheading efforts to bump the minimum wage, which is set by each state's government as long as it conforms to the federal minimum. Elizabeth Owens, a 56-year-old former industry worker and New York resident, said, I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at McDonald's, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Burger King. And I was making $423 a week after taxes. It's just not enough. In New York State, the minimum wage is $8.75 per hour. Recently, several employers like Walmart and McDonald's have taken steps to boost their minimum wages. McDonald's said its wage increase will take effect in July and ensure that every employee will earn at least $1 more than the minimum hourly wage. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. The Houston Chronicle reports police officers fatally shot a man who led them on a car chase Wednesday morning in Northeast Harris County, Texas. According to a Harris County Sheriff's Office spokesman, the chase began about 10.40 a.m. Houston police tried to pull over the driver of a blue Chrysler 300 due to suspicious activity, including two unsafe lane changes. As they approached the car, the driver fled. A chase ensued through Northeast Houston and the driver eventually struck two vehicles. Officials said the driver got out of the the car and officers told him to raise his hands. He then appeared to reach back inside the vehicle. That's when officers opened fire on him, firing 10 to 12 rounds. The man died at the scene. No weapon was found in the car. The slain man was identified as Frank Shepard, a 41-year-old barber and father of three. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A new medical study on the effects of marijuana use confirms that everyone knows you're high and that you'll never stop feeling like this. Everyone can smell the marijuana on your breath and on your clothes. Everyone is laughing at you. Additionally, the in-depth report reveals that despite trying to act cool, you're definitely laughing too much and everyone is messing with you. Your parents know you're high, your friends know you're high. Strangers on the street know you're high. If you're young and you smoke marijuana, you will probably never be able to find a job. And if you're an adult, you will most likely be fired. If you hear a noise, that's probably the police and you're probably going to jail. While previous studies suggested that it's all good and that we're all made of the same stuff that makes stars, New research indicates that your brain got broken and you shouldn't have done this. Doctors say the study raises important questions such as, what if that wasn't just marijuana and how are you going to get home? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, launching into the third hour of the program. Plenty of time for you if you want to dial in and join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Feel free to connect to us that way. With you tonight, it's Ian here. Oh, Mark, I'm so sorry. You are still sitting in the uh, the wrong seat. <laughs> I can always move if it makes you happy. It would probably make it so I could do run the board more effectively if you did. Uh, but yes, uh, Ian and Mark here in studio. We've got Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Lots to talk about here tonight. If you're just tuning in, you missed the story about a, a man in New York, Tribeca. Uh, I don't know where the hell Tribeca is. I've been to New York enough, but I don't know it's where It's like near anything New York is. City. Oh, so it's not even in New York City. I didn't realize that. I think it's a district of New York City. I don't know. I it's meant, got that New York City sound to it. It's certainly got big buildings in it. Um, anyway, guy living there was taking photos of a family who lived sort of across the way from him. And uh, right across, you know, the, in the building uh, adjacent to his. And he took photos of them over a year's time period. And he turned it into an art exhibit. Now... I guess it suggests here in the article that he did get paid for this exhibit. So I think you might be right, Mark, that it's using the photos in more of a commercial means, like to use in an advertisement that gets run over and over again or something like that. Yeah. that you know, if this artist getting paid for his exhibit wasn't considered to be a commercial means in, in that way. And so the court ruled in his favor. Uh, and it was an appeals court. So the first court ruled in his favor. The family, who was apparently upset about this because, well— they made the choice to leave their windows, floor-to-ceiling windows, 
wide open for an entire year, giving this man the opportunity to lurk in his apartment and snap photos of them throughout the, uh, I imagine it was more during the darker hours of the day because then the lights are on inside and it more illuminates what's going on inside the room for easier photographing purposes. Uh, but they got upset about that after this thing hit this art exhibit, this art gallery that that took the pictures Somehow, word got to the family that this was happening, and that was interesting because it did say that their faces are mostly obscured, so he would take pictures of them and then publish. I'm sure he got some with their faces in it, but the ones he published were the ones that just made them more of like an anonymous family Uh, because he was taking pictures of them doing their everyday family activities. She's cleaning, he's making food in the kitchen, you know, they're sitting down watching TV, whatever families do in Tribeca. Uh, They were doing, you know, that's what the the focus of this exhibit was. It was called The Neighbors. And, you know, the irony, of course, of this, in case it wasn't already clear, is that these people were upset by this, right? So they go ahead and file a lawsuit, which, of course, is only going to bring more attention to this. You and I would never have heard, never. It would have just been some exhibit in some Tribeca art gallery that only, what, how many thousand people could possibly filter through this exhibit before it you know, moves on to the next And the exhibit. vast majority of them wouldn't have uh, known them from Adam. They'd just exactly. be the average, ordinary people. Right, there um, would have been people there commenting, oh, isn't that wonderful? This is great. wonderful artwork. They'd be sipping on their wine or whatever it is that people do. Uh, having it's absolutely insightful. The yeah. artist is a genius. Yeah, I mean, they, they, you know, some of these comments would be made ultimately, and then the art gallery would move on to whatever the next installation was. You can really see the the despair in her eyes as she yeah. toils, toils. <laughs> I, Except oh. you can't see her eyes in this photo. It's her bending over, cleaning, you know, f- not facing toward the you camera. You can see the despair in her haunches yeah. as she bends over and toils. Oh, what it must be like for these people. Yeah. So, I mean, that's all it would have been. Had these folks not filed this lawsuit, this would have been just another of zillions well, of art exhibits in, you know, New York City. Well, you know, I I hate to be the— Now everyone knows who they are. I hate to be the cynic, but that's the way I was born. Um, the You know, so many people look at lawsuits as— Winning the lottery. Oh, mm. this person did something. I'm going to be able to get a whole bunch of money out of them. And uh, I, I'll probably be able to sue a whole bunch of different people. The building and everybody. Everybody's getting sued. Sue, sue, sue. And that, you know, that's not how you make things right. No, certainly not. I mean, if there was some kind of damage done to them, that damage is, was done initially, and then they made it worse by increasing the publicity. The You know, who... How many thousands more people heard about The Neighbors, this particular art exhibit, and how many people have now Googled The Neighbors? I actually haven't had a chance to yet, but I'm curious. Now I want to know, you know, what photos of this. This guy took pictures for a year. That's an incredible (laughs) level of dedication. I mean, presumably every night he's there on his camera. He's an artiste. Often, often enough throughout the year, he's there observing these people and taking pictures and selecting the best ones, blowing them up into, you know, large format prints. I mean, this is a big, big project. And, uh, you know, they, they really helped him out with this lawsuit, ultimately, by uh, by going after him. And yeah. that certainly wasn't their intention. I would I would imagine they did. And I want to know, of the what I presume to be thousands of pictures he took, how many did he select and which ones did he select for the exhibit? Because digital photography is next to zero cost. It's not like the old film photography where you actually had to pay for every print that you developed and you'd have to develop every print in order to know whether you got any good pictures, yep. now you can just snap, 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 and pick the best of the bunch. And that's what this guy did. And so I, this has me curious. My my curiosity has been piqued, and P-Q'd. now I want to go and see. It's not because I want to invade these people's privacy. I don't care who they are. What they do in their home is of zero interest to me, and I imagine it's of zero interest to everyone looking at the art exhibit. Uh, just curious as to you know what his art looks like. Well, yeah, I mean, I would have. I'm kind of curious as to what it's like catching people in this average everyday thing, and then you know, going through what must be thousands, maybe tens of thousands of pictures, and then selecting the ones that are sort of, you know, the best composition, the best, the most artistic. Yeah, I bet that's very interesting. So uh, you can join us here, share your thoughts. I mean, are we crazy? I mean, should these people deserve some kind of protection by the law? 
Is that what uh, you know? You think the toll-free number here is eight fifty-five four fifty free. So he's got himself a website. I did Google it. Arne Svensson, A R N E, or maybe it's pronounced Arn. Arn Svensson, S V E N S O N dot com. I'll link to it over on our Facebook and Google. And when you arrive on the front page, the first photo that you see is of the lady of the household, but she's obscured by. The uh, apparently there are curtains on these windows, but this they're not closed. They're pulled backwards, but her head is obscured by the curtain. In another one, there's uh, she's mostly the the top portion of her face. You can see her lips and the bottom of her nose. I mean, these aren't particularly identifiable style photographs. He made a specific effort to keep their identities out of these pictures. Uh, I mean, I'm looking through here, Mark, and uh, I'm not seeing anything where it's, you know, somebody's face is is popping out at, at anyone at all here. This maybe you know, a profile, there's like a profile here of someone sitting watching television, and you can see, again, the bottom of their nose and their mouth. These are not identifiable in any way, shape, or form, and mm. this family put themselves on the map by bringing this lawsuit, and now I imagine it's probably a lot easier than before to identify them because, you know, if one of them has a Facebook profile or had a Facebook profile. It would have been a trivial matter to actually pull up their names since they filed the lawsuit and get their actual photos of their full faces. Mm. So. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I can see why they would file the lawsuit, but, you know, eh, babe, did, th- th- sorry, that's the law. And I don't, in this case, I support it Sadly, I don't want to support it. I don't think that you should go photographing people in their houses, but uh, you shouldn't leave your blinds open either. The only, actually, I I take it back. One member of the family is fully revealed, and that is their dog. So you can see the dog's face fully in one of these pictures. But uh, that's it. That's really the only privacy that was invaded. Otherwise, you know, there's nothing really going on here in this. Uh, But again, I'll link to it. You can see for yourself over on our Facebook and Twitter. The toll-free number tonight here is 855-450-FREE. If you want privacy... You have to take the steps to have it. You've got to do whatever it takes, depending on the level of privacy that you want. And there are different levels of privacy that you can achieve. But by default, you don't have it. And maybe it'd be nice if you did have privacy by default, but you don't. So you have to do something about it. And we'll come back with more. Now, if he went on their property and took the pictures, I'd have a totally different feel for this. Which he couldn't do because it's a building. So, yeah. you know, an apartment building. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. He didn't have to break and enter. They let him in by opening the blinds. It's Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free to join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. You know, I did mention that privacy is something you have to work for. You have to take steps to achieve privacy. One of those steps you can take is ProXPN. You go to proxpn.com slash FTL and you can get signed up there for ProXPN. You can actually start for free. And what ProXPN does is they encrypt your internet connection. So ProXPN helps you with internet privacy. You still have to put up blinds on your windows. ProXPN cannot help you with that part. But with the internet you privacy... You pay enough, I'm sure they will. But this is sort of the internet version of blinds on your windows to some extent because ProXPN encrypts your data connection, meaning your internet service provider cannot snoop on you anymore. And maybe not just your internet service provider, maybe every other internet service provider. So if you put ProXPN on your laptop or your smartphone, which you can because it's available for Windows... Mac, iOS devices, Android, Linux, so pretty much anything you might be using. When you put it on your smartphone or laptop, whatever network you're on, the administrator of that network doesn't know what you're doing because ProXPN, again, obscures that. It encrypts your data connection. You can get started for free at ProXPN.com slash FTL, but when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, private torrenting ability, and to get past regionally blocked websites... Use code FTL50, that's FTL like Free Talk Live, and 50 as in 50% off the price of their annual account, which, by the way, locks in that discount for the lifetime of your account. So next year, when you're wanting uh, to upgrade or not upgrade, to, but to continue on for another year, you get the same, same great discount. discount. Yeah. Yeah, so really it's an awesome deal. It breaks the price down to less than 5 bucks a month. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go there to get started, and then don't forget promo code FTL50. By the way, there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, so you've got nothing to lose except for your privacy. Again, you've got to take steps, so step one on the Internet is proxpn.com slash FTL. Some other good steps towards protecting your privacy. Cur curtains, good idea. Close the curtains. That would have helped this family in uh, Tribeca a lot had they done that. Well, in this case, um, I mean, think of what's really important here is this guy was on his property taking pictures of them through windows that uh, they had not That's sort correct. of closed and obscured. 
Now, one thing people might, you know, Peeping Tom might come to mind when uh, they talk about this guy who's taking artistic photos, and they are artistic photos uh, of this this family who, without their consent and without their knowledge, but is they only artistic because they're hiding their faces? Does that make them more artistic? More or, artistic. You know, yeah. Had the lady been naked, would it not have been artistic? Not artistic. Why not? Some that's people just, consider that art. Yeah, that's just purian stuff. Um, no, that's not a, not nearly as artistic to my mind. Okay, <laughs> nudity is very artistic. Right. Art is uh, art appeals to you know art is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Correct. And, and so in, is prurience, by yes. the way. And, if you and, think naked people is a prurient, a prurient thing that says more about you than it does about anything no, it's else. It's not the, the nakedness that really bothers me. And it's that this guy was in his house <laughs> uh, taking pictures of other people in their house. But I've got to say that I do agree in, from principle that you're responsible for your own privacy. However, if you're the difference between being a peeping tom is is a peeping tom comes on your property and kind of peeks through, through as window. best they can and yeah. that sort of thing. So I do not support. I do not say that that is a right. I say that that at that point is trespassing. Sure. Um, and that you know you're trespassing. It's not just wandering across the corner of somebody's property. You're going onto their property for the purpose of for yeah. the purpose of violating their privacy. And you will see something that otherwise someone who did not go on the property would not be able to see. Like if you go up and put your eye up to someone's window, you will be able to see things that the person who was at the street level or at the sidewalk or whatever could not possibly yeah. see. The Real distinction. So you totally invaded their privacy in that case. The real distinction here is this guy's on his property. I can see, like, you know, like there's different grades, right? Like Even if you were on public property, it would be fine. I think it probably would, but one needs to acknowledge that this guy was on his property. And so there's just decreasing areas of sort of, uh, of righteousness, as it were. He's in his living room taking pictures. He's mm -hmm. got the lights off. I'll say that that's not quite as, uh, as righteous as having the lights on. Uh -huh. but, but he's in his living room with the lights off, taking pictures that are completely visible from his living room. That makes it okay legally it still makes it weird but it does not make it in, to my mind uh, immoral so i would say that on public property i would feel similarly but i can see why people who have their houses right butted up against the street would be like hey no photos please have you mm. ever have you ever been someplace where somebody has a, a house like you go and to it's a big right city on the sidewalk it's sure right there and yep. their windows either they you know they're opening up themselves for you know hey see what we see what it looks like when we have dinner mm -hmm. or they're just have you know window coverings I think it must be awful to have windows and not being able be able to open them to the sunlight without people peering in your house. But you bought the house in yeah, all right. likelihood. You chose the location, uh, and you could always move somewhere else with more privacy. You know, you don't have to live in a densely packed urban environment. You can always go and get a house with some trees around it, for instance, or some bushes or shrubs or whatever. Yeah. So uh, as far so that's another obvious thing you can do. If you want more privacy, move to a more private location. Uh, move to a place where you can't be seen from the road. Moving the costs money. There's no doubt about it. Privacy costs money. Yeah, There's no doubt about it. And that's kind of the point I'm making here is you have to put effort in. And when you have to put effort in, that usually means you have to put money in as well. Another good one is to uh, you know get a private mailbox as well. Some people will use P.O. boxes. I don't recommend that. Because uh, then you're well, giving money to the post office. But well, plus secondly, you can't get um, can't packages, get packages delivered. So what's the point? Um, but yeah, if you have a private mailbox like a UPS store box or pack mail or whatever the heck they're called where you live locally, then that's a way to obscure your address from everyone you do business with. Uh, that's a good way to keep some information private as well. You can also rent a house privately uh, if you've got cash. You know, if you've got enough cash, you can most. Uh, there, I'm not gonna say most landlords, but some landlords will happily take cash uh, for a rental and be a little bit more flexible with things like you know putting your name on the bills. Like if you gave a landlord enough cash, he might just leave the electric bill in his name. You know. That's uh, pretty hard to find a landlord who's willing to do that, but there are ways to make it so you know your name's not on anything. You could always find a willing friend or someone who's not so concerned about their privacy. Give them some cash and have them put their name on something as long as they trust you, because obviously the risk involved in that is well, what if this person you know puts 
the electric bill in your name and then they don't pay the bill. Well, that's a problem. That, that could be a difficulty, right? Like I've been in situations where I lived essentially in somebody else's house and mm-hmm. I paid them money to live there. I called myself a roommate and that's certainly an accurate terminology, but we weren't on equal footing because we weren't on both on the lease. Yep. And more or less what that person says goes. That's their house. That's their house, sure. And you pay to live there and you can decide what, you don't want to live there anymore. Um, whereas I've also lived in situations where I've had people live at my house and it's my name on the mortgage. And that's an entirely different situation. At that point, it's my house and they've got to live by my rules. And if they don't like it, they can go. So, I mean, you know, those, that's, that's how that goes. And you got to, it's a give and take. You got to decide what works for you. And you give up a certain amount of uh, freedom for yep. a certain amount of privacy. That's true. The more privacy you have, the more difficult it's going to be to do business. You know, if you, for instance, don't want to have a bank account, you don't want to have a credit card with your name on it, that's going to make things a little bit more complicated for you. Uh, but again, privacy takes effort. Maybe you've got some tips. Maybe you live an ultra private lifestyle and uh, we've. May perhaps not gone deeply enough into this topic. There's something we're missing. 855 450 free. That's the toll free number here at Free Talk Live. Coming up, what is Liberland? I want to know. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoin. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoin by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your product and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. 
the people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, and you can join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features that we share with you on the site there. Uh, with you tonight, by the way, it's Ian. And Mark. And uh, let's go uh, back to the to the news here. Liberland. It's at the top right now on freetalklive.com. Our listeners, listeners like you, have gone to freetalklive.com and uh, they have voted. Voted on various different news articles, maybe YouTube videos, whatever is interesting slash entertaining, whatever you think our listeners will appreciate. You can submit content right there to the front page at freetalklive.com and then vote whether you like or dislike uh, said content. And then uh, whatever is voted up will make it to the top of the page. This is on the top right now over at freetalklive.com. It is Liberland. And I'd seen, uh, I think I saw something about this on Facebook earlier and didn't really think much of it. it just seemed like yet another Move Here project, uh, which, Mark, you have been cataloging these Move Here projects. Yeah, so. I don't know that this one even qualifies, but I'll, I'll I'll keep my ear out. Why does this not qualify, in your opinion? Well, a Move Here project has to be encouraging people to move to a specific location mm-hmm. in order to find more liberty. Um, it's the, what I'm doing mostly with the Move Here project. I have chronicled a few other ideas. Maybe this will, you know, maybe this will... Isn't that the point of Liberland? I'm not sure what the point of Liberland is. Hmm. I've just seen. I haven't. I haven't even read a, a full article. Why don't you do that? I have a little bit about that, as a matter of fact. Here, so their website is liberland.org, and here's a story from Time Magazine. A Czech man is claiming to be the president of a new country he founded in Europe. Vit Jedlica, a member of the Conservative Party of Free Citizens in the Czech Republic is the self-appointed president of Liberland, which he says sits on unclaimed terra nullius territory wedged between Serbia and Croatia, the three-square-mile country where ta- they put country in quotes, where taxes are optional and a military is non-existent, does not, quote, interfere with the territory, unquote, of the two states, according to Liberland's website. The statement announcing the creation of the new country came out just a few days ago, and it reads in part, quote, The objective of the founders of the new state is to build a country where honest people can prosper without being oppressed by governments, making their lives unpleasant through the burden of unnecessary restrictions and taxes. I like the sound of it. Sounds pretty freedom-oriented. Uh, the, Sometimes uh, you can have situations like this where these governments, they make little deals with each other on, you know, this is where our land is and this is where your land is, and um, they'll make mistakes. There was one situation, I believe, in Minnesota. There's a little piece of Minnesota that's like across the lake, and you can only get there by boat. Um, you know, like I don't even think I think you can even drive there through Canada. I'm not entirely sure how it goes, but there's this little tiny little bit of Minnesota that's not attached to the United United States really, but it is part of the United States. There's another one that went on um, at one point during some treaty negotiations between Canada, what was you know Great Britain, what Canada, um, and the United States. They sort of left out this little bit at the top of New Hampshire. Um, you can go find it at uh, Republic of Indian Stream on Wikipedia, and they've got a little article on it. And it's just a little, you know, at one point, basically, it was a sovereign nation because neither part could re- truly gra- uh, claim it. So I'm what's sure going on with it now? Well, it's not any longer. Oh, it was okay. uh, swept up at some point or another. Bummer. But, I mean, it, it has legal standing to claim to be sovereign but I doubt anybody who's living there really um, is interested in that. The country's motto is, and anyone from New Hampshire will appreciate this, to live and let live. Yeah. 
which is a very laissez-faire uh, viewpoint. Jedlika, speaking by phone from Prague, told Time that the effort began as a political stunt to garner media attention. He's 31, by the way. He said it started a little bit like a protest, but now it's really turning out to be a real project with real support. The project has already received roughly 20,000 applications for citizenship, according to Jedlika, who estimated that the country will receive as many as 100,000 applications by just the end of next week. Liberland's website has details of how to apply for citizenship, including sending an email of introduction. A CV is optional. I don't know what that stands for. Jedlika added that some people already have plans to relocate. He joked that we have the busiest immigration office in the world <laughs> and joked that his seven-person volunteer staff, he expects, will grow. The citizenship process is selective, and Jedlika says only between 3,000 and 5,000 people will be granted citizenship in the coming weeks. Down the line, he said he expects the number of citizens to be comparable to Liechtenstein, a 62-square-mile country that borders Switzerland and Austria with 35,000 people. Not all of the citizens will live in Liberland. Jedlika was active in his party in the Czech Republic, but he said his efforts to oppose government largesse proved fruitless. Oh, yeah. Once you're inside the government and you're trying to work against the government getting to spend more money, yeah, they're not. that's just not going to work. He says, so we decided we have to go the other way around. We have to set up another country and really start the other way around. I'm still going to be active in Czech politics, he said, though he noted that Czech laws may forbid a president of another country from running for office. He said, I would probably resign and let somebody else run Liberland for me if there was a chance to do political change in the Czech Republic. Well, that doesn't really show much uh, dedication, does it? I mean, he's he wants to start He admitted own... it was a stunt. Yeah, that's true. Liberland is a peaceful country and will have no standing army. If neighbors Croatia and Serbia were to oppose, he said he would only put up a passive defense. Quote, we will move, but we will keep our claim to the country, he said. But so far, he's still awaiting a diplomatic response from the country's neighbors. The Serbian and Croatian embassies in the United States did not immediately respond to requests for comment. You know, countries uh, tend to not like other people to join their club. Mm -hmm. They just don't want to do that. Um, you know, they, they would rather a territory remain in dispute between two countries than for that territory to become its own sovereign place. That's less control for their uh, from their purposes. I don't understand it entirely why. It's, it's just less centralization. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't countries want more centralization in the world? Yeah, but— They want to annex that place, don't they? I, I mean, I really, I think it's the only good way to solve a problem. So if you've got, if you're a country and I'm a country, and we've got this little spot in the middle that we don't agree on, is it really worth going to war over? I mean, that's really it. You basically, I can sit there and claim my so my sovereignty over that piece of land, even though I don't get to t get any taxes off it or whatever. And at some point, I can hope in the future I manage to get it through, I don't know, some treaties or the world court or whatever. And I guess that's what they're doing. They're just hanging around, hoping that they get another piece of land so they can extract taxes off of those people there and then say, we're here to help you, don't you know? <laughs> if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't have any roads. We had roads before you came. Well, now we're the road bringers. Well, that's what government is roads 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 and uh you know i mean that's that's what they get to say right we we feed your poor people if it wasn't for us all your poor people would be starving our poor people are starving we'll see <laughs> <laughs> so i want to learn more about this maybe you've been digging in deep and you know a lot about this i mean it's the top story on our website right now at freetalklive.com i've got their website pulled up liberland.org we'll read their own uh, th that was the Time Magazine piece we just read, so the mainstream media perspective on this. What does Liberland have to say for themselves? Uh, we'll share that coming up here in a moment. And I want to know from you, I mean, how do you feel about this? Is this the, the Free State Project killer? Is Liberland uh, going to be more successful? I mean, they certainly seem to have a good head start here. I mean, as far as they've only been around for a week, and they've gotten major press attention from mainstream media all around the world. I mean, foreign language media, U.S. media, all over the place. The Free State Project's had plenty of press. Yeah, but I mean, if the Free State Project has never sent one press release and gotten this level of coverage. The Free State Project, okay, so this Liberland says, hey, why don't you sign up and see if you want to be a citizen? This doesn't really ask, I mean, all they've asked people for is an email, mm -hmm. right? The Free State Project proposes that you pick up your life and move somewhere for more liberty. And I get why some people might say, well, New Hampshire's 
cold or, um, you know, I've looked into it and it's not for me or I've got my business or my family or whatever. All those things are fine. This is a stunt and it's getting the results that a stunt gets. People An who initial are, bang and then... Yeah, people who have really no intention of moving. I'm not going to move to this unless they really achieve something. They've got right? a flag. Y- yippee. <laughs> New Hampshire's had a flag for th- hundreds of years. All right, we'll come back with more here. Share your thoughts on Liberland. Is this something more than a stunt? Is uh, is it going to catch on? 855, 450 free? Or is it just a joke? It's Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at survivormax.com. On Monday, Josh Liebarger made his status Case of the Mondays Followed by a frowny face It got one like and five comments, including Dislike Well, Josh, Geico also wants to make a comment To turn that emoji's frown upside down In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico With all that extra dough, why not give Monday a makeover? We see an office party in your future Hosted by you Hashtag happy face Hashtag savings Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's 
It's Free Talk Live. We're back here. You may take control of the airwaves and bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com. And if you want to support the show, then please become a Free Talk Live amplifier over at amp.freetalklive.com. You get perks like access to the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only Facebook group, and more for 5 bucks a month over at amp.freetalklive.com. We also have our African satellite fundraiser going on right now. You can go to africa.lrn.fm, contribute to that. There's some perks involved where you can uh, you have Mark Edge uh, here in the studio record a uh, phone mail, a voicemail greeting for folks. That's a $100 perk. There's a $1,000 perk where you can select from multiple shows. Uh, pick your favorite, lrn.fm show. And uh, you can come hang out in their studio when they are recording their show. Free Talk Live is one of those shows, but there are more. You know, there's other shows besides Free Talk Live. And maybe you like them better. You can pick them over at africa.lrn.fm, and there's some other perks involved in that as well. It makes a big difference uh, if you can uh, if you can contribute to that. So please do. We're talking about Liberland, and you got to hand it to him. I don't know who his press agent is or how he managed to send out this press release and get all this attention for. You know, claiming a three square mile uh, piece of property in between Croatia and Serbia. It's a tiny little dot on the map. Yeah, I don't know how he ended up getting all this publicity, but it, he's getting it. And now as a result of the publicity, they've had tens of thousands of people apply for citizenship in this new country, or at least what they are claiming is a new country. And as far as I'm concerned... If you want to claim you've got a country, then you've got a country in my mind. I mean, it's yeah. just an idea. Yeah, I, when 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 I ask people if uh, I can secede, my little piece of property can secede, and it's certainly smaller than uh, what three square miles is what they're claiming here. Yeah, you've got a, a ten or eleven acres, or something. Yeah, I've right? got a, yeah, a, a bit more than ten acres. Um, well, the first things they start asking is all kinds of crazy questions, uh, things that really sort of irrelevant, like how you're gonna, you know, how are you gonna pay for the roads? Well, how do how do people that come in, in into your country pay for the roads? They don't. Now, that doesn't – I'm not saying I'm unwilling to pay for the roads. I'm mm-hmm. saying you've got a really terrible funding system for roads. You've got a really crappy system for road funding. Um, okay, fine. Uh, but you know, what about border checkpoints? Well, why would you want to put a border checkpoint up in my country? If I'm coming out of my country into the United States to go shopping, don't, don't the businesses in the United States, the government is supposed to be representing, want me there? Absolutely. I mean, none of these things. Well, how are you going to get electricity? Why in the world wouldn't the uh, wouldn't the organization that uh, doles out electricity want to sell me electricity? Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't they? Well, I, I, you know, and if that's a problem, fine. I'll buy solar panels if that'll make you feel better. <laughs> if that if if it'll make you feel better, I'll buy solar panels. But electricity and the government they really aren't together. The the government basically provides a monopoly to many electric providers but that's really about it now, if i'm willing to pay at their monopolistic prices why di- what difference would it make now the difference between uh the free land of edgington edgingtonia what is it fine called? you call it whatever what you, you want it? well what do you call it i i don't have i don't really believe i have my own country edgingtonville um no? I, I, I thought you were into that i thought you had declared it your own I, I, sovereign I, territory I, I don't take any of this stuff seriously because i know there's people with guns that'll kill me over it it's all just a joke. They're probably not going to kill you over I call my place it. Edgewood Farms. There you go. Okay. Uh, the difference, of course, here is that the Liberland folks are actually offering citizenship to people. They uh, are offering, and what the benefit is of that, I'm not really sure, uh, because you know, generally the idea of citizenship is that you're trading allegiance in return for an obligation of protection. At this point, I don't imagine the 31-year-old man who started this thing who at this point is saying he still intends to continue in Czech politics, uh, is in, is going to be very good at protecting anyone from anything. So, you know, what are the benefits, I guess, of becoming a citizen of Liberland? It's, it's not really uh, acknowledged likely yet by any other government in the world, so a Liberland passport, you know, may have different levels of acceptance. I don't oppose the idea of it. I hold a world passport, as a matter of fact. Um, so I like the idea of having more choices in the world. I just don't know, you know, what does it cost to become a citizen? These are all important questions that need to be answered. I mean, it, are, are the people who are applying for citizenship actually going to move to Liberland? Is no. this a habitable place as well? I don't know. 
Uh, it is apparently located between Croatia. This is their, from their website, Liberland.org. Yep. Uh, it's located, they say it is a uh, the Free, Free Republic of Liberland, here and after known as Liberland, is a sovereign state located between Croatia and Serbia on the west bank of the Danube River. The Danube. Nearest, Danube. The nearest towns are <laughs> so poorly read. <laughs> Zmajevac in Croatia and Baki Monostor, the autonomous province of Vo- Vojvodina, Serbia. On some maps, this area is referred to as Gorna Siga. Liberland came into existence due to a border dispute between Croatia and Serbia. This area they haven't along- even been around that long. This area along the west bank of the Danube River is not claimed by Croatia, Serbia, or any other country. It was therefore terra nullius, a no man's land, until Vit Jedlica seized the opportunity and on the 13th of April 2015, just three days ago, formed a new state in this territory. It's a good idea. Liberland. The boundary was defined so as not to interfere with the territory of Croatia or Serbia. Its total area of approximately seven square kilometers is now the third smallest sovereign state after the Vatican and Monaco. For more information regarding the border dispute between Croatia and Serbia, here's an article on Wikipedia. The motto of Liberland is to live and let live because Liberland prides itself on personal and economic freedom of its people, which is guaranteed by the Constitution, which significantly limits the power of politicians so they could not interfere too much in the freedoms of the Liberland nation. Well, I'm for them trying their little tiny government. Um, I suspect that the governments around them will probably not be for it, but uh, I see no particularly good reason why they wouldn't be. Well, it's interesting that they, uh, I mean, again, I don't know anything more about this land and the whatever the dispute was beyond what I've just read, but he's claiming that neither of those countries claim that territory. So that doesn't sound like a dispute. Why wouldn't they claim the territory? Well, okay, so do you remember the Republic of Minerva? It sounds familiar, but no, I don't. Okay, the Republic of Minerva, and you told me about it originally, was oh, okay. a uh, little, little, well, it, was, it wasn't It was even an atoll. Uh, it was really just a, a, a sandbar way yeah. out in the Pacific Ocean, beyond the country borders of any country out there, and they began, they brought some equipment out. This was in the 70s, and they began to pump sand out to make their own islands. Mm. After they'd gotten a certain ways uh, there, they'd made two islands, um, they they uh, they put a flag in the ground. They sent some letters off to Australia, New Zealand, Tonga, and some other country, maybe uh, Papua New Guinea. I'm not entirely sure. And then they got taken over by a, a gunboat, right? Those countries got together, had themselves a little meeting, said, uh uh-uh, uh, uh-uh. we cannot yeah. have ourselves a new country out here. Maybe Tonga, they shouldn't have sent the letters. They're closest to you. You. We'll claim them. And then Tonga sent out what probably passed as their navy, which was one boat yep. uh, with a 50 cal on it. And they, <laughs> uh, you know, they, they arrived in the Republic of Minerva and said, we do hereby annex you. And they did, and they took down the flag and whatever, and that was wow. it. So the the Tongan fl- Tonganese flag went up on the one island, and a couple of days later it went up on the other island, and that's how they were taken over. Wow. It was a it was a coup. It was a takeover. It was an invasion. But the fact that a government doesn't claim a piece of territory today doesn't mm-hmm. mean that they won't claim that territory tomorrow. I suspect Croatia and uh, Serbia will probably have a meeting on, over the telephone, Skype or WebEx or, you know, go to meeting or whatever that is they'll have uh-huh. real, real right quick and get together and say, okay, we need to take care of this. We're going to have a new, um, you know, neighbor on our border and this isn't particularly good. So what are we going to do about it? Who is needed in Liberland asks the about page of their website, Liberland.org. Liberland currently needs people who, bullet point, have respect for other people and respect the opinions of others, regardless of their race, ethnicity, orientation, or religion. Have respect for private ownership, which is untouchable. Do not have communist, Nazi, or other extremist past. We're not punished for past criminal offenses. Up, oh, I guess I'm out. Or... What do they consider to be a criminal offense, right? Like I've stood in front of uh, a government police car in protest of uh, what they were doing. Would that be considered a criminal offense? Or do they actually mean like crimes against humans that have victims? I guess I'm out. 
How to apply, you can send an email to info at liberland.org comprised of an introductory letter where you introduce yourself and write brief information about who you are and why you want to become a citizen of Liberland. You can also send your curriculum vitae, which is CV, which I was confused about earlier. You know, if you go to uh, Pitcairn Island, they'll give you some land to build your house on. Why would anyone want to go here to this? I mean, Pitcairn, uh, they actually have their own government, and I think you can... I think there's 46 people, citizens on the island. You get together, you just secede from England, you got your own country. Why would you even bother doing this? They also want a valid identity card or valid passport with your photo where you can black out all text except your first, last name, gender, date of birth, nationality. Anyway, go check it out at liberland.org. Maybe it'll be something. Maybe. See you tomorrow. Are you- the easiest thing in the world for a reader to do is to stop reading, according to the late, great Barney Kilgore, who became managing editor of the Wall Street Journal in 1941 and grew the paper circulation from 33,000 to 1 million by the 60s. And he'd be pleased to know that his paper is one of the few that people now pay to read online. Someone else pre-internet who realized that attention is fragile? Motown Records founder Barry Gordy. In the early 60s, when his label dominated the charts, he'd bring a dozen real people into the Hitsville, USA studios and audition songs. And he'd ask, if you were down to your last dollar, would you spend it on this record or would you buy a sandwich? Today, attention span seems like an oxymoron. For tips on cutting through the clutter, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Kane and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, April 16th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.48 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,208 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $229. Antiwar.com reports, fresh off his visit to the White House, Iraqi Premier Haider Abadi expressed serious concerns about the Saudi attack on Yemen, warning it could quickly escalate into a region-wide sectarian war. Facing non-stop sectarian war themselves, Iraqis are understandably sensitive to anything that might make matters even worse. Abadi claimed to have spoken to President Obama about this and said the U.S. shares his concern on the war. The White House was quick to deny this, however, saying they have no problem with the Saudi war at all. That's unsurprising, of course, because while they haven't exactly publicized the fact, the U.S. military is participating in the war. Saudi ambassador to the U.S., Abdel al jubir slammed the criticism of his country's war, saying a body should focus on the problems in his own country and not worry who the Saudis are invading at any given moment. The U.S. being on Iraq's side against Sunni insurgents in that country and backing Saudi Arabia's Sunni coalition in attacking Shiites in Yemen is making their regional position harder and harder to justify to the nations therein. The U.S. has long done whatever seems expedient at any given 